Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Abi Yahweh, we just told you for another day. We told you for the breath of life. We told you for your Ruach HaKodesh. Abi Yahweh, we told you for these feasts that are upon us. Yahweh, we told you for the protection you have set upon us over your feast. We told you for a sound mind to be able to come before you and do your will. To be able to walk in the footsteps of your son, Yahshua, HaMashiach. Abba Yahweh, we told you for your tender mercies. Giving us, Abba Yahweh, another chance at salvation. Yahweh, continue to see us through this way. And even though as these feasts approach to a close, have it that we, after the feast, still have the same mindset to want to do your will, to get rid of all leavening within our vessels and stay walking in the new with you. Yahweh, continue to have your light upon us. Have it that we are walking correctly in your way, that straight and narrow path to salvation. Yahweh, have it that we take great delight in our culture and in the days that you have set upon us to keep. Have it that we keep these things to the end of our days and show even the next generation to come all your wonderful works that you will place before your nation. Yeah, we have it that is your nation that is focused on you. Have it that your nation is striving to be a one like mine, to walk, to walk properly before you so we may be able to gain eternal life. So we may be able to see your face in peace. Have your Ruach Hakodesh reign within our vessels. Fill us up so nothing else may be able to enter in. So we know each and every day of our lives when we walk this way of life, we walk in it correctly. We walk in it just to please you and not the world. And we walk in it so we had that opportunity to walk in your kingdom to come. Have it that all wickedness and evil stay far from us. Have it all distractions stay all far from us. Have your shalom be upon your people, not only at this hour, but all days that we are under you. And have it that we can continue to hear the word, Shema, continue to do it, walk in the ways, and always know that this way leads to salvation. Even though the days may seem get dark, even though the days may seem to be coming to a close, I'll be Yahweh have it so that your people are in tune with you and see everything that you want us to see so we may be able to succeed, so we may be able to have victory. May be able to maneuver in this earth and not be of the world, but be of you and your son, Yashem HaMashiach. So one day we may be able to hear those words say from you, well done, my tub and faithful servants. In Yashua HaMashiach's name we pray, hallelujah. Hallelujah. House of Israel, you may be seated. Shabbat Shalom once again, House of Israel. And I say Shabbat Shalom all the tuning in on the live stream. I want to read from the book of Psalms today. This is Psalms 116. Psalms 
Psalms 116 says, uh, however, Yahweh, because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. The pains of death surrounded me. Pains of hell laid hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of Yahweh. O oh, Yahweh, I implore you, deliver my soul. Merciful is Yahweh and righteous. Yes, our Abba is merciful. Yahweh preserves the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. Return to your rest, O oh my soul. For Yahweh has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from failing or falling. I walk, I will walk before Yahweh in the land of the living. I believe, therefore I spoke. I am greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are lies. What shall I render to Yahweh for all his benefits towards me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of Yahweh. I will pay my vows to Yahweh now in the presence of all his people. Precious in sight of Yahweh is the death of his condition. O oh, Yahweh, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of Yahweh. I will pay my vows to Yahweh, now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of Yahweh's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Praise ye Yahweh. Hallelujah. Israel, enjoy this feast. Enjoy this feast of the unleavened bread. We were just talking about how when the feast days approach, they seem to go by so fast. But when they do come, make sure you take great delight in it and enjoy it because this is your culture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This time, I'd like to turn the service over to Zarkane Dawi, Yachin singer. We want to receive him by giving Yahweh the highest form of praise by saying, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alléluia. Shabbat shalom, Yisrael. Truly, we do give Almighty Yahweh all the honor and the praise, as well as his son, Yahshua HaMashiach, he sent unto us to be a light even unto the Gentile nations and a redeemer. He said he would send unto Yisrael a savior and a great one, and a great one indeed. Hallelujah. We do told to Yah, I want to admonish you as children of Israel, even on this Shabbat day, even in the midst of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we told to Yah for the gift of life. I don't know about everybody else, but this Feast of Unleavened Bread here has been major, it has been transitional, and the people of Yahweh, I pray that they see and understand the spiritual time zone that we're in, as the time shift, as they do the uh, Eastern Standard Daylight Savings Time. I can't even get it all together. It doesn't even matter. But as they do the shift, so too must we as the people of Yahweh see his shift. So do Yah. I ain't even going to say nothing. <laughs> so, so do, so do Yah. So we see the shift. I want to say to the people of Israel, we, we have a tendency. We, you can't escape your genetic makeup, your spiritual heritage, personal characteristics that you receive down through the line of times from your fathers. Many people in the world 
don't want to see things as they take place, but you can't duck it. Saturday Night Live did a skit. They had two new, four news reporters, two white, two black. And they were doing the news. And as they were reporting the news, uh, the black news reporter and, and the black woman, they were in the center, and two white folks were off to the far right and the left. And the camera would focus in on them as they were reading the news story. And the black reporters would always rejoice <laughs> when they knew the news story was somebody white. And the white reporters would do the same thing when the story is being read and they knew the suspect was black. And I thought on that skit, I say, you know, certain things happen and people rejoice. <laughs> and Keenan, I forget his name, Keenan says, uh, glad it wasn't the brother. And the sister high fived him. It was the funniest thing to catch that. And I said to myself, that's probably cultural in every household in America. I don't care what your skin color is. You see stuff in the news, you know. It's the same way with Russia when Vladimir Putin sent them into the vault of one of Russia's oldest churches, one of the oldest churches that they have up in Europe. And these were the documents and the different things that they had stolen or common did. No, nah, let's use the word stolen, call it what it is. You stole these things. And you've held them hostage and presumed to teach us. But when he came out and said these things to the world, I posted it on my social media page for those that did not see the interview. I mean, not the interview, did not see the uh public presentation with the full uh, interpreter laying out what he said. So I did post it on my page. But um, when he did it, it was kind of funny because I realized, I said, now, I know the white folks can't possibly sit back and say, ha, I'm glad it's a brother. But I watched the black community globally get up in arms. We got excited because finally, as Steve Coakley said, that good white source came and told y'all something that now you can really believe it. But we were saying it all along. I was born in 1965. And I was the last of seven children. This is all I ever heard. This is all my father taught. This is all he ever said. So we could always be kind of calm when it was said because we knew and we were taught to calm down. There's this one thing Elder Johnson used to always say, man, oh man, oh man, do I wish he were here today just to see this. But nevertheless, he saw it because he spoke it. But he did say the whole world is going to be surprised when they come to learn just who the chosen people are but then they're going to be even more surprised when that black man cracked that sky. And I never forgot those words because, see, that's what has to happen. Years ago, I was hanging out someplace where I shouldn't have been, but I was there. You know how we as Israel, we're rebellious, we're stubborn, we're hard-headed. And two men had done something to a man. And they were laughing about it. And they were bragging. Sort of like the world has done to us as they laugh and they brag. But their last words before he came in the door was, he ain't going to do nothing. He a chump. He this. He that. He ain't going to do nothing. And he kicked that door open and came in. Who ain't going to do nothing? Bop, 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 bop. He shot that gun and he dropped everything that was involved with what they had done to him. Funny thing about it is that everybody that was in the room that was not involved, nobody moved or nobody flinched. Nobody ducked or took cover because they knew him well enough to know he could work a gun and was going to hit exactly what he was shooting at. And wasn't intending to kill nothing, but he just wanted to let them know he wasn't 
to be played with. And I never forgot that scene and the look on his face because it was almost as if he was laughing because where I was sitting, I was safe, and he winked at me just a split second before he did what he did. That's how it's going to be for Yisrael when Yahshua cracked that sky. He got to crack that sky and come get his people. See, the world laughing right now because they think he a chump. He ain't going to do nothing. He ain't going to stop it. Who shall see us? All the things that the scripture says that they would say. Is there knowledge in the Holy One of Israel? But it's coming now. So I say to the children of Israel, just as we saw our brothers on the boat cruise, on the ferry, beat daylight, saw some white folks that just got out of hand and they whooped them with the chairs. And there were times you could go through Walmart and see black folks in there buying folding chairs and practicing with chairs. I don't know if y'all have been in the store and seen that, but you, you can see people practicing with a chair. What the hell are we doing? Yeah, it was kind of funny. But I bring all this up for one reason. I do want to say, don't rejoice just yet. Calm down. Because we still have to go through it to get through it. Just prior to Yahshua's coming, the whole world, gonna be, they're going to be mad. They're going to be angry because nothing they plan is going to be going the way they plan it. When the things that they plan fail, in many instances, the things that fail will actually work out in the best interest of the children of Israel. Which would mean it's not a time to rejoice. It's a time to be cool, be quiet, take cover. Or as when the brother kicked the door in in the pool hall, stay still. You understand? This is what Yahweh's people are going to have to see now and understand. We ain't got to move ourselves because... We know this is the truth. We understand it. And when you know a thing, you can be a lot calmer than one who is uncertain. Say what we want about O.J. Simpson. Ah, to this day, I just don't believe O.J. killed Nicole. Uh -uh. Oh, oh, oh. Can I say this? In some men, you, you know, you, some men, you can glean their character. You, you just you just know some men, he's a killer. He ain't be play. Hey, then there are other men, you just know he's a chump. Good people, but they chump. You ain't no killer, right? They ain't gonna kill a cold glass of water on a hot summer day. But he remained so calm, even being idiotic with, if I did do it, you know, wrote the book, if I had done it. Stupid stuff. See, it's from rejoicing too soon. Some stuff you got to completely wait till the smoke clears. You understand? When the brother shot up the pool hall, the old man that owned it, he walked with a limp and he had a trach in his throat. I don't want to go into character, but I need to to get the point across. The black community has this thing they do. White folk do it too, but white folk do it differently. The brothers made a video years ago called Stop Snitching. And the Stop Snitching video was to the criminal element. They were talking to other criminals saying, if you and I are committing crime and we get caught or I get caught, shut up because you were in on it and just as guilty as me. Stop snitching. The news media switched it up and made it seem like the Stop Snitching video was warning everybody. It, the, the, the drug dealers knew the old grandmother in the house that called the police on them and told them, get off my front and stay off my step. She wasn't in the crime, so they wasn't really mad with her if she called police and told on them. They understood that was a part of the culture. The stop snitching terminology was for other criminals to stop telling on each other. You know, we went on it together. If you got away, then shut up. I'll shut up. You shut up. Anything you got, hold my share till I make it out. This is the process for Yahweh's people. Stop snitching. We run to all the other nationalities trying to heal them, trying to do everything. We haven't even gotten ourselves together first. This is why I'm mad with a lot of them so-called Hebrews, because if you all will ever just humble yourselves and sit down with the generation of the elders that have been 
exposed to world history and to Israel's history. I ain't talking about, I, I ain't talking about my own damn YouTube video. Cause YouTube got everything. You can file a thousand videos a day on YouTube and swear up and down, you know something. And then the facts be hidden in the pages of a book and you've never cracked it and read it to understand anything. Anybody can post and put up anything on YouTube. YouTube is the lazy man's intelligence gathering apparatus. I'm not opposed to it, but I'm just saying I don't depend wholly on that. 30 years ago or better, when I got started, wasn't no internet worth nothing. You had to get out and hit them libraries. You had to know your subject matter. You had to know the card catalog. You had to know the code system. You had to know the Dewey Decimal System, how to track and trace information. You had to know where corporations filed documents and how it was put away. And if you were really good at it as a uh, librarian or researcher, you made friends with the local librarian because you knew this was the one person in the community that knew where all the right information was. And because their salary is so meager, but their love and dedication for knowledge is so intense, we often mix up the two and disrespect the both. You hear what I'm saying? Somebody sitting on a wealth of information a lot of times gain knowledge in so many different areas that things that are exciting to you and I tend to mean nothing to them. Einstein did something which I thought was the stupidest thing in the world till you get to a point where you got a bunch of clothes and then you can't figure out what to wear. Then you realize how interesting what he did really was. Einstein bought 12 suits, 12 shirts, 12 pairs of shoes, all the same color. So that every day of his life, he could get dressed and in a hurry and not be pressed trying to figure out what to wear. People thought he was so poor that he didn't have but one suit. As silly as it is, and or sound, I know most of us wouldn't like, let's be real, we're, we're royal, it's in our blood, we like nice things. But in reality, he didn't have to fight to figure out what to wear. He could just get up and put it on because it was all the same thing. Okay. Point here. The librarians, they don't look like people of great knowledge and stamina, but they're sitting on a wealth of information, just as the little messengers of Yahweh. I'm talking those that he sent. I ain't talking about those that went. Those that he sent versus those that just went. Those that just went have an identifying characteristic. They have an identifying marker. They need to be out in the front. They need to command your understanding. They need for you to trust and believe in them. We must put all our trust and belief in Yahweh Yahshua. Do you hear me? This is why we tell you, don't sit up here and just listen to us teaching you not crack that book open and read behind us. Read that book. The Bereans read the book because they knew this is the way to salvation. The whole world understood it as the whole world is coming to understand it now. Before we rejoice that Putin just opened the vault and said he's a black man, those of us that already knew, we're several miles ahead of everybody that's just learning that because we still have to keep it. We still have to obey. We have to be doing this. When he kicked them clouds open and come out and let them know, you didn't think I was this, do you? You didn't think I believe, huh? Henry Kissinger and others rejoiced when America launched some satellites and put stuff in outer space. And I never forget in 95, the statement he made about some of their satellites and the imagery that they put up. This dual image satellite that was looking far out into the heavens while simultaneously looking deep into the earth. And Kissinger said that the thing was so advanced that we can see the top of a pin on the sidewalk as well as we can hear an angel when he flaps his wings. Now, proverbial, we ain't looking for no white men, no white angel, no big white suit and a, a ne negligee or the negligee, whatever you want to call it. And they flapping their wings, flying through the heaven, looking like uh, Charlton Heston or Jim Carrey. You get the point. But just that they think they can watch the heaven so much so to mark his coming so as to be ready to literally fight him when he comes. 
you're still dealing with the craziest damn thing to ever hit the face of this earth. You hear me? Now, what I would suggest white people do is something that I learned and something I had to do. When I strayed from the commandments for a few years as a young man in my teens, when I really started getting back into the word of Almighty Yahweh, there was something I had to do, and it was hard to do. But it became a pattern where once I started learning to do it more and more and be sincere and started understanding that he was appropriately responding, my life started getting better. I had to hit my knees and beg for forgiveness, had to repent, had to become sorry and go away from it to never go back to any wrongdoing because I was raised in the right way. So I would suggest to any white people calling upon the name of Yahweh, don't you all be too quick to rejoice in the fact that you call upon the name of Yahweh either because genetically you are the seed of the worst of the heathens that Yahweh said he would send against Yisrael, which means you have to become so sorry for how you were born into it, how you were perceived, how you studied it, how you understood it. You have to beg and plead till you really feel the spirit of Yahweh change you and bring you to an understanding where you can see as Vladimir Putin did say, divinity is not limited by a color line. Because what they meant was it's limited only to us as white people so that they made him. This is what the scripture says. They've changed his visage. Let's get it. Isaiah 53 real quick. This is what the scripture says they did now. You all can't blame this on Pookie and Boo Boo running around in the corners and shooting and stabbing each other. They did not do this. Your fathers did it. Isaiah 52, 14. As many were astonished at thee, his visage, his facial feature was so marred more than any man and his form than the sons of men. You changed him from exactly what he was to the direct opposite. You marred his face more than anybody. You made him white when he was black. And you all stood firm in that. And you would not relent in your supremacy, which is nothing more than a psychological illusion. You all taught the world to be better than us. I say even to the Hispanic community as you come to the country and begin to awaken and you are inundated with what you perceive as profound blessings. Don't you get too high and mighty. Don't you get above yourselves. Because you all too have a hand in global hatred against us. I was listening to the news yesterday as they were speaking to the families of those who lost their lives in the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And the man who couldn't even speak English was rebuking the people of America. And he had his daughter as the interpreter speaking for him. And he was demanding that we be respected, that we be honored. We built this country. You're a damn lie. You built nothing. You came here and inherited on the backs of the sons and daughters who worked from sunrise to sunset and received nothing. And that's the way they treat us. That's why I say, uh-uh, calm down, because he's going to bruise these nations. He said he's going to wound the heads over many countries. You all think he's playing with you. He's going to drop your leaders like Big Gary dropped the men that robbed him. You all think this is a game. Six black men were killed in a highway accident on 695 when two cars were speeding trying to get in front of each other. And as a result, one clipped the bumper of the other and it flew it and it caused it to be airborne. And as they looked up, the last thing they saw was a car coming down on them. Six black men. They had families too. And they didn't reach all around the world. 
and give great accolades to those same highway workers the way they did these Hispanic men. It's sad when anybody loses their life, especially when you lose your life under nefarious conditions such as the collapse of a bridge that really could have been avoided. Let's be real with that. I ain't gonna talk about it like the brothers talk about it and make it a conspiracy theory. Lay out the facts and the evidence. Foreign Affairs Magazine, March, April 2021, talked about shipping containers and cargoes, how it was going to be more and more difficult to get things around the world, as well as America would in actuality be retreating on its issue of global trade. Let me say that again real slow. They would be retreating while pretending not to do so. So we in love. There's a Foreign Affairs Magazine on my desk. Somebody retrieve that for me real quick. It's a blue cover. It's about... It's a sky blue cover. It should be on the right side. Sky blue cover about the self-doubting superpower. I want to show y'all something. See, we don't read. We don't follow the most powerful people in the world and look at them and say, okay, these are devils. They've done hallelujah. Totally y'all for you. This is January, February 2024. Then they pick up on something. If I'm reading it and I get it every two months and pay attention, I want you to hear what they said. In the March, April 2021, they put a picture of shipping containers on the cover. And the articles are so boring and, and so laborious, you have to really read to catch into what they're saying. Sometimes read it out loud as if you're hearing them say it to get a better understanding. Or at least that's how I have to do it. So they acknowledge that shipping routes and things of this nature will be harder and harder to pursue. Then the war break out. Suddenly over in the Suez Canal, they can't get the ships and things in. Stuff is starting to happen. Then in Turkey, ships are crashing, hitting docks and different things. Over in Japan, ships are crashing. It's like parallel parking now. The ships come in and hit the dock the same way. You got a parallel park. You got to pull up beside the curb. You check it, make sure your tires ain't on the curb. You give yourself a good three or four inches and you're content. Who comes in with a ship? This is the curb. This way you're supposed to be coming in parallel. With. Who comes in like this? So this is happening now. White folks are complaining. Say so this is what you get when you fire a bunch of Americans and you start hiring foreigners all over the earth because they work for a quarter of the wage that we were getting. So we don't catch that Yahweh's word. And Revelation 18 says he's going to bust this country down. I watch all the white folks that they write and keep saying the same thing over and over again, telling the same lie. With all that's written in prophecy and it covers the whole world, it's so interesting and baffling that America is not mentioned nowhere in prophecy. How the hell you figure that? So you're saying this hellhole can do whatever it wants, but it can't be seen from the heavens. So y'all, we can see everything but America. You can see some people have to be addressed because of their genetic makeup. Children of Israel can't help their genetic makeup. You know that's us. You know we love the party. As soon as Putin said that we came out and party like Yahshua came back after the finishing of the, of, of, as he finished the reading. We acted as if Yahshua was here. We were satisfied. <sighs> White folks, they do the same thing on a different scale. You know we were the children of Israel. We partied at the foothills of the mountains. As soon as Moshe went up to get what he was going to get, went to do what he was doing, we couldn't wait. Like a lot of y'all do me on social media. I post stuff trying to address men. Dear sister, you hurt my feelings this morning. You really hurt me with that. I looked at it. I said, no, this can't be. I tried to address the brother. I said, well, I know why the women ain't been addressed in it. Come on now. Why didn't y'all get the, the, the instructions to the woman in the garden? I'll tell you why. She wasn't there. He addressed the man. And periodically we can address the men without addressing the women. It does not mean we're leaving the women out. It means that we're trying to teach the men to get yourselves together. Damn it, here come that spirit. Why can't the women be included in this too? Then you'll be offended when I start addressing the women. Because see, sometimes the only way you can really address the women, sure enough, you got to come in the power of Almighty Yahweh like Yahoo, and you got to bust the spirit of some of these women down sometimes. Let them know, shut your mouth, get in your place now. I keep telling y'all, I know what I'm doing on social media. To awaken the people, you have to spoon feed them. Everybody can't have the book of Jeremiah just dropped on their head and they get up and repent and understand it. Everybody can't have the book of Revelation thrown at them and they ain't never read Dr. Seuss. They ain't going to get up and understand. Praise him. Hallelujah. Did you see how John said he's going to see news? Everybody don't get it. Y'all was giving Yisrael a time. He's drawing the thing out slow. 
a ship at nine miles per hour moving so slow, hit a bridge and took the whole bridge out. We thought it was going about 40 or 50. It was going nine miles per hour. It's so slow. It's so big. You can't stop it. But at nine miles, it hit that pole and brung down the whole infrastructure of it. This is the same way the word of Yahweh has gone forth. This is why Yahweh took so long. He could have did it overnight if he chose to. The same way when Yahshua comes, he's going to reign for 1,000 years. Yahweh can straighten it all out overnight if he so chooses to. He chooses to do it so that each and every generation that comes can get to know the way he wants it done. Why are we always rushing everything? That's why sometimes the messages go from two hours to three hours, three and a half hours, almost four hours. Sometimes because it takes a while to get things across. Israel, we're bluffing, y'all. We're so busy pretending like we're really getting it, like we're really learning it, like we really got it. We really got it. All you got to do is stop and look at our channels. Look at them internet channels. Look at the stuff we're doing on YouTube. Look at the stuff we're doing on Facebook. You want me to address the women and include them? I'm going to include the women in something. I'm going to say, I watch I get in trouble this week for this. I'm going to go at all the twerkers. I'm going to go at all the sisters selling coochie on, on YouTube and on videos. I'm going to go at all of that now. Since you want the women included, all the righteous women on Facebook and on my Facebook page, you better chime in. I give you my word. You better chime in. Because see, when I address the men and tell them that it's time to stand and get themselves together, I'm addressing the men for a reason. Men rule the world. And the men of Yahweh right now, they're at the bottom of the barrel and they do not understand. Our people, they understand more than the shepherds. This is so amazing. We vote. We are registered. We believe in the system. We think it's going to count. Listen to this. Page 83, an article entitled, The Case for Conservative Internationalism. Listen to what they're saying. The U.S. government's neglect of the military has been a bipartisan problem. <coughs> what does bipartisan mean? Anybody know? What's the difference between partisan and bipartisan? Oh, okay, you know that. Smooth answer. Who said that? That's like me saying, what's the difference between this finger and this finger? You say two fingers. Okay, we got that part. <laughs> partisan and bipartisan. <clears throat> partisan is when everybody agrees, right? Or is it bipartisan? Bipartisan is when everybody agrees. Bipartisan is when they all agree. Partisan is when there's a separation. Y'all got me? Let me read this again. The U.S. government's neglect of the military has been a bipartisan problem. Means what they're doing even to the military, both parties have agreed to do it. The collapse of America is a controlled situation, number one, by Yahweh. It's going down exactly the way he says it's going down. Whereas they're bringing in the new world order. <coughs> pardon me. Excuse me. They're bringing in the new world order, and they actually think they're bringing it down the way they say bring it. But he's engineering even what they do. You got me? Watch this now. In 2011, Republicans helped pass the Budget Control Act which over the ensuing 10 years cut $600 billion from the Defense Department's budget. So over a 10-year process of time, <clears throat> they will cut $600 billion from the Defense Department. Okay, now that's Republicans. Now those that's into the military and support our troops and all that other stuff, you would say, well, why would they take money? We need more money. And globally, we need this, we need it. Really? Well, watch this. So as to not be outdone. And if the budget agreement that McCarthy negotiated with Biden in May 2023 goes into effect in the spring of 2024, it will cut defense buying power by another $100 billion. So, you see, they ain't preparing to fight and defend this country. It's going down, just like Scripture said. No man buys her merchandise anymore. They're pulling back. They're scaling back. Now, watch. When the budget cuts hit Maryland because of the collapse of the bridge, watch the stuff that they start cutting and taking first. Watch. Anyway, let's go further. Unless the U.S. government radically revises its willingness to fund defense, 
it will fail to defer its adversary and could very well lose its next war. So they're weakening defense. They're weakening education. They're weakening jobs. They're weakening trade. They're weakening everything. Food supply. Every time you turn around, something going on. Don't you all really see? This is the word of Yahweh, which means that as it gets worse, yes, it'll get worse for us, but those of us that know and understand, we see Yahshua's coming in this. Now, what they're not doing a lot of writing about is how the ten toes will emerge and come to a position of power and authority in earth. They all are in on the plan. They all know, but they ain't talking about that. Because now what they needed to do is to implode and collapse, have a stateless leader and a one world government where everybody just agreed to everything. In other words, let it go down. And then in the midst of the dust, like a fight between Snoopy and Lucy, you see the dust and all you see is the fist and the feet flying, right? When the smoke clears, we'll come out and act like we've been fighting to do this or do that. You know, let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. Oh, the leader is so great. He's so grand. Oh, boop, he's dead. He's out the door. Well, I'll take his place. I'll come in. But what he did was so commendable. It was so good. It was so great. You know what we ought to do? We ought to commemorate him. We ought to make a memorial. Let's make an image to him. Now, they ain't going to say let's make an image to the beast. Because that will trigger your alarm system. But if something goes down and they say, let's make an image, that way we will always remember him for all that he did. We'll forever keep his memory alive. Are y'all paying attention to what's happening on the world stage? Now, I know some of you, my Facebook brothers, and friends, y'all going to listen to the message, y'all going to hear this, and next thing you know, you throwing it all out on your pages, premature. The beast is going to die, and then he's going to get up, and then somebody's going to make it, they're going to make it. Stop it, brothers. Calm down. Let's all walk lockstep together, because we don't want to run ahead of Yahweh. You want to prepare Yahweh's people. Man, something about preparing Yahweh's people that a lot of the brothers that's emerging, preaching and teaching, don't realize it's coming. And that is the fight that comes with preparing Yahweh's people. Because what I've learned over the years, the hardest part in that fight to prepare Yahweh's people is what? Anybody know? Yahweh's people themselves. That's always your hardest fight. Because everybody proclaims Yahweh's talking to them. With all the pandemonium and everything that's going on, everybody says he's talking to them and egos prevail. Instead of saying, what does Yahweh's word say? The scripture reminds us that it gets down to the wild where the priests will get so arrogant, they ain't going to ask for Yahweh's counsel. The scripture says, and the priests said not, where is Yahweh? They won't consult them anymore. They'll consult the books, the internet, the magazines the published report, they'll go to all that guessing. But Yahweh is a revealer. In 2015, the Chinese Navy had 255 ships capable of contributing to their combat operations. Now it has 370. The United States Navy only has 291. And the Biden administration plans to further reduce that number to 280. So you see what's happening? The Democrats, and if they're all doing the same thing. They're all in on it. They're weakening the thing. They're cutting it down. Now, I post stuff strategically as the Spirit leads me. I ain't just putting stuff up for the hell of it. Some stuff for deceptive purposes. I'll say this right on YouTube. For deceptive purposes to throw the enemy off the trail. I'll throw something funny up. A monkey beat a dog with a frying pan. Dog was on a chain. And the monkey was smacking the dog. Dog couldn't bite him like he wanted to. Ah, monkey just bop, hit him. And that make you laugh for a moment. That gets your attention off this most serious post I just put up. Because they'll go and see my stuff and take it down. So I'll post stupid stuff in between. And people be commenting all on that. Giving an in-depth analysis, long, drawn-out theses. I'm like, damn, it's a monkey. Little birds was fighting the Chinese kids, the swans. Because they're like, you ain't eating us. And the swan was guffing with a five-year-old. Dissertations on it about how it feels. I'm like, y'all ain't catching it. I'm trying to teach while everybody's over teaching. 
and ain't catching what I'm doing. I'm sliding it in till they block that page. They block this one. That's it. I'm telling you straight out the gate. Point here. To get stuff across, I'm sliding it in between. And those that's following, you got to know what I'm doing. You got to be paying attention to how I'm putting it out there so you can see it. There's something in the earth that Israel does not understand. All week since the ship hit the dock, I've been posting big ships, ship manufacturing, showing you the motors to the ships, showing you how they get them on the sea, how they get them out the manufacturing plant into the water. I've been showing you all this for a reason. Because Israel think Yahshua going to just come and magically put the kingdom up. Poof, green trees. Poof, watermelon patches. Poof, discotheque. No, 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 no. Erase that. Erase that. Poof, sanctuaries. Poof, new schools where children don't even have to study hard. They'll just go in and come out and the knowledge will be in their head. Just poof, make everything great. There's going to be some work going into this. Ezekiel, so far reaching in the vision, y'all would bless him to see something. And we don't understand this. All the military weapons and the might that they put into it. Scripture said you got to break all that stuff down. Minister Johnson was 12 years old. I don't know if he remembers this or not. I took him with me one night after the Shabbat. We went down to the Inner Harbor to Barnes and & Nobles. And I parked strategically because I had been down there early in the week. So I parked where we would have to walk two or three blocks. I wanted him to see something. Earlier that day, I was teaching a lesson on how you're going to have to take all their weapons, their knives, their guns, their swords, melt this stuff down and turn it into farming equipment. This is what Ezekiel says they're going to do. You're going to break down all that military weaponry, the large ships, the tankers. You're going to have to get fire going, copper smelting and all this. And the same way they built it and formed it, you, y'all are going to make them farm in this earth. We're going to teach on that after the Passover and unleavened bread. But the point was, I walked in past this big ship they had in the inner harbor. And we stopped and looked at the ship. And I was like, you see that? That's what we were talking about in the lesson today. Where you got to take all the weapons and beat them into plowshares and pruning hooks. And the nations shall learn war no more. I wanted him to see how large the ships are. It's going to take a lot of work. People don't look into stuff like that and connect it with the global economy and connect it with society. Super tankers. Do you know how they get rid of the ships when they are too old? Yes, they cut up all the good parts, anything used, they get all that off and take them out and just sink them in the sea. Put them in the water. So now all this rust, it will be thousands upon thousands of years before it just completely obliterates and goes back into nature. Meanwhile, you're dumping this stuff into the oceans. You put it on the shores of Countries like Bangladesh and other places and telling people, go for what you know. Cut it and use it for whatever you can and just leave it. They can't enjoy their beaches because there are hundreds of ships lined along it, like you saw in the movie, Leave the World Behind. Once that thing hit, it hit. You ain't going to call no tow truck. Hey, Matt, you busy? Do me a favor. Get your, get your truck down here, man. Pull this boat off the water from No, you ain't going to do it like that. So there's a lot of work involved in the coming kingdom age. And the Hebrews are just happy that Yahshua coming, but all the details concerning every single aspect of it, don't nobody bring it up. So you know what we have a tendency to learn? We learn that his kingdom is coming and we're going to have a big old party and we're going to forever ha be happy and rejoice. You got to get ready for the authority of kings and queenships. You understand? It ain't easy running the uh, royal family. Look how they, they call it the firm. They run it like a business. And somebody quit and they got mad with them because they quit. Didn't give them two week notice, nothing, just quit. I'm out. Oh, really? Okay, you out then, all right. And they mad at each other. It's like husband and wife mad with each other, and one stay downstairs, one stay upstairs. So then uh, the one downstairs all of a sudden wondering why they hear a shoe falling down the step. Person just mad, he just throw a shoe down there for no reason. You hear somebody upstairs stomping for no reason, just walking over your head. Petty fighting is what I'm talking about. Don't be looking at me like this going on my house. We don't live like that. But I'm bringing this up for a reason. Because this is the way the nations are working. And the poor little children of Israel, they just thinking, kingdom to come, beauty, beauty, beauty. We're going to take them. We're going to make them slaves. Yeah, they're going to have to work hard. Believe me, because all the nations were in on your enslavement. What I love about justice in Yahweh is that Yahweh would not be just if he didn't do to them the same thing that they did to us. You don't hear, 
white folks said it. Only white folk I ever know that really, really said it, went straight in debt with it was Herbert W. Armstrong. Before he died, he did try to tell the European nations, look, scripture does say he that leads into captivity should go into captivity. And we, the European nations, will have to one day go into captivity under real Israel. His thing was teaching them that the white folks were real Israel so that they're in captivity and enslavement wouldn't be harsh. You hear what I'm saying? He's the only one I ever heard say it. You ain't hear none of the rest of them say that part. Point being, as they bust their own country down, we sitting around looking at them and cheerleading. Instead of staying out the fight, we all in it. The U.S. Navy only has 291 ships, and the Biden administration plans to further reduce that number to 280. Military unreadiness is now perhaps the greatest national security challenge for the United States. Well, what did the Jewish lady say the greatest challenge was? Black youth in America. Why? Because you're going to wake up one day and realize who you really are and pray like you ought to pray. And y'all will move on your behalf like he said he would. Which means we really have to be ready to see all the things that are happening. Israel did not fight at their first battle down at the foothills of Megiddo. They didn't fight. Jehoshaphat came out and said, hear me, all Yehuda and all Israel. Trust in Yahweh and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper. You need not fight in this battle for the battle is not yours, but it is Yahweh's. So as they went there and got ready and got prepared for the battle, the nations that were coming against them to fight them, it was a microcosm of Armageddon. All the nations that hated them were right there. And Jehoshaphat told them, this way your, your favorite part come in. What did Israel do first? <laughs> Say it again. They sang praises to y'all. Now you say, oh man, that's all black people do. They're always singing. They're always mind. Okay, well, you think you like good music on your own? You think you like singing and the perfection of the instruments and the way the notes ring out? You think you like that on your own? Yahweh likes it too. That's why he moved on Israel's hair because they began to praise the beauty of holiness. They knew how beautiful it is to know the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They knew, and therefore they began to sing praises to him, and the beauty of their voices resonated with him. He says, let me move right now. And he sowed the spirit of confusion among them so that the nations rose up that came to fight Israel. <clears throat> All fought and helped slay one another. And when it was all over with, all Israel had to do was go down there among the dead bodies and take up the gold and the silver, all the jewelry. They went to battle with the best of stuff. And all Israel had to do was gather it up. Y'all were telling you Armageddon is coming the same way. We haven't got a clue because we still arguing with them about identity. We still, this is how you know the identity is so false that a lot of the so-called camps are teaching. Because you're bringing everybody in. And when you stop and study all them other nations they're bringing in, they have no semblance, no format, no structure for having kept Torah. Nowhere in their own history. Who they bringing in? Uh, uh, they say the Native Americans, all that. If you knew your history, you'd know Solomon sent expeditions here. They were on the high seas, sailing the ships, came all the way from there, here, and taught them how to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. That's in the book. They came before Columbus. Now, we in the 21st century, how many black billionaires you got? You got a bunch of them. Oprah being there. Bob Johnson to be in there. Michael Jordan to be in there. Who else? Who I miss? Uh, Rihanna be in there. Jay-Z a billionaire. Shaq, Shaq a billionaire. Okay, Shaq a billionaire. If he ain't a billionaire, he's a big dude. Either way, put him in the pile. So many of them, right? By all these cars, uh, 200 and Two million dollar Lamborghinis and all this other stuff, right? Let me show you how wicked we are and how weak we are. Ancient Israel built ships and got on the high seas, sailed, came here and taught the Americans how to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. When the people with the buckle and the pill and the hat and all that stuff came here and killed them, remember, they showed them with the turkeys and the food and all the vegetation at a specified time of the year. They gathered everything in. You came in half starved. They fed you. You ate. And by Halloween, they were dead. Because you were killing them. But we did that on ships. Now, in the day, all these billions can buy anything you want. It costs less than $300 million to make a shipping container. 
I posted it on social media. There's a page up there where I put the information up where they tell you how much it costs to do everything, how much profit will be made, how much it costs to rent a shipping container, a tractor trailer that you see. They show how they're taken off the back of the trailer, how they're hoisted up, put on the ship, how it's locked in place so that it don't topple over. They walk you through the whole price of all of them. So you mean to tell me 10 black billionaires can't get together and say, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put 50 million of my money. We're just going to put 50 million up till we got 300 million. And we're going to buy one. Same size as the Dolly. Y'all know about Dolly, right? And the Italian artist Dolly. He was about the shipper. He painted the picture of the ship and the ship ran and crashed in this high seas and all that. So now a ship hit named Dolly and, 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 and in the picture, it was crashing into a dock, right? Well, anyway, your black billionaire, so righteous, Oprah, hey, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. No, it's you are a liar, you are a liar, you are a liar. Now, you ain't got no sense to get a ship. Isn't that what Garvey was trying to tell him? The man. He was not the Messiah, but ain't it interesting that his middle name was Marcus Mosiah Garvey? Believed in the scripture as best he could. What we got to learn is some of our people come to the knowledge of the truth and do the best they can do. It's us that know and won't tell. So now ain't nobody built no ship to ship nothing for black people, and black people ain't even making nothing. Who is the largest tomato grower in Baltimore that you know of? Say it, say it out loud. Wait, wait, that one's wrong. Say that one again. Bingo. <laughs> largest tomato grower we know is Mr. Taylor. Anybody, anybody know any of the black farmers personally? Now, we're not mocking them. That's, a, that's an honor. That brother took one book out of that library, looked at that book, read that book, y'all would bless his mind. He's been doing it ever since. So I asked for a reason, because black folk ain't manufacturing nothing. If he want if his yard just overgrow, where he have to sell his stuff, he can sell it locally. And after a while, if he grows so big, he can't send it internationally, because ain't no black folk got no shipping routes. Don't nobody know how to sail the high seas without the white man. And J. Edgar Hoover told them to tell the United States government, keep the Negro off the high seas. And you know why he said that? Because the man knew you dominate everything you touch, even in your sin. Yahweh got his power upon you in such a way, you go out there and touch and become the best at it. Y'all ever see them videos that Jeffrey Epstein made when he was raping them little children and doing all? Y'all ever see Jeffrey Epstein? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I told you we ain't gonna stop. You ever see Epstein do that? No, he ain't do it right. But here come Puff Daddy all smooth. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Remember that? Now you got the black Epstein with no island. I know that was funny. I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna need to see that later. But anyway, you get the point. trying to hold that. It wasn't meant to be funny, but I know it's going to, that, that people home probably rolling on the floor. Anyway, how do we get caught up in all this small scale, low life activity after all we've been through? There's no way, no black man should be caught up in no sex trafficking the way the world has trafficked in us. You understand? So some of us, sometimes you can't feel sorry for us. Because we have not repented and don't want to leave the sins of the world behind. Even dumbass Obama had nerve to be an executive producer on that and told you leave the world behind. People didn't admit, they didn't get that. Anyway. Fortunately, neither China nor Russia has yet directly challenged the United States in ways that will require Washington to fight outright. But they are getting close. It's intentional. They're weakening the military. They're weakening the economy. They're weakening the education. They're weakening the job market. All you got to do is weaken everything and keep blaming something else. You understand? That's all you got to do. You ain't got to destroy it. Just weaken it and blame something else. Blame something else. Now, we need to thank y'all. More people than that didn't die. You look at the video clips of the, of the, of the bridge and the cars flying across it. You really do have to give the police credit on what they did. In 90 seconds, they sealed that bridge off and stopped it. 
Everything that was on it, they let it fly across and get it off. I know a brother was driving truck. He told me, he said, I went across the bridge at 1230. He said, one hour later, it was gone. Truck driver, I know. Brother been here once. Dwayne uh, Hill. Across the bridge. 1230. Hour later, it was gone. Y'all was with him. Now, what's all this got to do with Yahshua's last day? Real simple. Sometimes you can go through something and it be so intense that you can't really focus or you lose focus because you got so much pressure going on. I know me and my personality. I have a way where when things get to me like that and I get frustrated, I have a way. I'll stop quick. I kid you not. I'll stop everything because I want to pray now because, see, that's how the devil gets you. That's how people get killed. That's how people uh, get hurt in accidents and things because you got so much going on and you're trying to meet the demand that you lose focus and you misstep or you miss the right. That's why when I'm going to meetings and different things, I don't let nobody, if I'm going to meet with you, I don't let nobody shift my meeting location at the last possible moment. See, that's how Malcolm got murdered. People shifted off on him at the last possible moment. That's how King got murdered. People shifted out or changed up on at the last possible moment. People be in on things or trying to spy and pry. A lot of times spying and prying on you or looking to see what you're doing or what you got going on. Ain't even nothing going on. But some people are just so devilish. That's the way they are. They got to be in on and or know every damn thing. So Yahweh's people, when they sit and talk and or meet with one another, should be of a prayerful mind because the devil is always working. He don't sleep. He don't get tired of doing evil. You know, I want all the angels to meet me in hell at six o'clock. We're going to have a hell of fire meeting. And they all get down there in the hot burning flame. I'm just being facetious, y'all. And he meet with the angels and tell them, you know, look, I'm getting a little tired of doing this evil thing, man. This evil just don't seem to be working out for me. So before y'all should come, I'm going to repent. And, uh, you know, y'all go ahead and take over hell. You know, you can do what you want to do. Any money you got left to owe to me or anything in the world, you know, y'all keep that. I'm out because I want to be saved. That's the devil don't get tired of evil. It's his job. So if that's his job and salvation's obtainment is your job, you shouldn't get tired of evil. You hear what I'm saying? You're going to have to fight for it. He fighting to destroy you and he don't get tired of fighting to destroy you, then you cannot get tired and not fight to obtain everlasting life. It's on you. The beauty of your fight, you got the cheat sheet. You hear me? You got the rule book. You got the cheat sheet. And one part of the cheat sheet that I love the most is when the messenger of Yahweh, he was smart. He was thinking now. Sirach was talking to Yahweh. But it was what Yahweh said to him. He said, all that I commanded a man to do, it was all right within his grasp. It was all right within his reach. Even the word. He said, you ain't got to ask who's going to go up to heaven for us and bring it down. You ain't got to say who's going to go over the seas and bring it back to us. For it is not unto you, even in your mouth. Now, you know that the word of Yahweh is so deep. Why do hospitals want to know everything about you? Everything. What's your religion? What's your mother's maiden name? What's your level of education? What's your occupation? Why? Look, I'm sick, man. My head hurt. The hell is my mother's maiden name got to do with my headache? That ain't gone away or whatever. They want to know so much about you because you are Yahweh's seed. You are his prized possession outside of Yahshua. And in all our sinfulness, he counts us as joint heirs with him. He did all the work while all of us as the workers goofed off. Goofing off, right? I had to work this week and take care of some business. I went out on the job site, some stuff we had scheduled. Had to get out there and get it done. My crew, I trained most of them on the crew that I had. Trained them. So we out there. I'm helping out. Brothers all at the same time. Every tool I pick up, they take the tool from me. So one of them, he smart mouthed me, but it was funny because it was in love and honor and with humor. So come on, man. Look, 
as, as a supervisor, we don't need you to do nothing. Go sit in the truck. Go read the newspaper or something. Go relax. Go take a nap. So I, in humor, I shot back at him. I said, all right, okay, all right. Y'all think I'm Tommy Lee Jones or something? What, you think there's no country for old men? All right, I'm going to go in the truck. I said, I'm going to make a phone call. I said, I'm going to call Anton Chigarro and all y'all. When he comes, I'm going to point out every one of y'all. So you had to see the movie to get the point of the joke. But they fell out laughing because they thought that was funny. In the movie, Tommy Lee Jones was a sheriff. He met a new type of criminal that he had never encountered in his 40 years in law enforcement. And he was sitting down at the dinner table explaining to his wife, I'm feeling old and I'm outmatched. There's a new type of criminal out here now with the mind and the mentality they got. I, I ain't ready for that. This is, this is turning into a place where this is no country for old men. And Anton Chikarov was fierce. He was psychotic. He was a killer. He didn't use a gun. He had a big uh, uh, air tank. You know them um, tanks, the scuba divers had, whatever. He had a big one of them. He carried it around. He had a hose on it, and he had connected a nail gun to it. So everything he did, he poof, blow the lock off just with the air and the nail. Bam! Blow a lock off, go in the building, shoot people, uh, make a decision, flip a coin, just then, uh, give me your car key. Poof! Everything was done with this tank. He just was out of his mind. So with the brothers sending me away, I felt like Tommy Lee Jones. One of the brothers, in fact, the brother said, move, get out the way. That's what it was. I told him. I said, man, y'all talking to me. I said, we're Luda. Because he work here. I'm waiting on Luda to jump out the bushes and start rapping or something. So I go sit in the truck. And I did fall asleep. I'll tell you all what I had a dream about later. But it was the young brother that came, the youngest one on the crew, and knocked on the door. He said, Abe. I mean, knocked on the window. He said, Abe. Mr. DJ, I seen that movie, um, No Country for Old Men. That wasn't funny. You say you can call Anton? That means he'll come through, he'll kill all us. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, no, nah, young blood, I just was messing with y'all. I want y'all to think that my feelings was hurt. He said, but hey, come on. Y'all the best I got. Go and do what you do. He said, well, we're going to do this and get out of here early. You think? I said, definitely. <laughs> they finished early. And got paid for the whole day. The scripture says, in honor, preferring one another. And it was beautiful to do that. I thought on how hard they worked and how I felt like I always got to put my hand to it or touch it. You don't always have to do everything because sometimes y'all will bless you in ways where you graduate. Where the work you do may get harder, but yet it's also easier. That's what I mean when the teaching of the scripture comes into play where you can do your best teaching under pressure. I find almost each week, except the Shabbat, but each week with the radio broadcast, almost every week I walk in the studio practically unprepared or 40% of the way prepared and sit there and break it down and make it plain inside an hour because I always back up and let the spirit guide me so that people will then call and say, that made sense. I didn't understand it till you brought it out. And what I'm trying to say to us as Israel, as we have shepherds, wherever they are on YouTube, in buildings, preaching, teaching, in homes, gathered in private, wherever Yahweh placed them little shepherds, pray for them that Yahweh forever be with them because Israel is nothing without its shepherds. Because its shepherds are emulating the chief shepherd. So if we run past them, we're bluffing, we're shucking and jiving, we're fooling ourselves now. You understand? We're pulling an Alexander Haig. Al Haig, I forget his position. He wasn't speaker of the house. He wasn't vice president. He was something else. But um, when Ronald Reagan got shot, Alexander Haig walked out in the press conference and took over. I think he was like, what do you, what do you call that person that puts the cabinet together? The uh, Secretary of State, something like that. Secretary of State, Defense, or something. But the next in command to speak will be the vice president. Then the speaker of the house. And then it's his position or whatever it was. Whatever the position was, he wasn't the next one to speak. But Alexander Haig was the same one who walked in the office and threatened Spiro Agnew, who was the governor here of the construction industry 
and the criminal activity that was taking place. In fact, when Key Bridge and all that stuff was being built. But anyway, it was Alexander Hay who walked in, sat down, talked to Spiro Agnew as the vice president when Nixon went out and he put this revolver on the table and started talking to him. Letting him know, well, no, no, Nixon gone. Nixon was corrupt, but you got to go too because you, you know when you was governor of Maryland, you was taking them bribes from them contractors and all that money. But that means nothing. You're corrupt. We want you to go. Now go quietly or else be assassinated. We want your resignation on the desk by 4 p.m. And he say he stood up and put the revolver back in his coat pocket and left out the room. Now, what kind of power do you have where you can threaten a president, a vice president, a sitting vice president and not go to jail? So here again, years later, Ronald Reagan gets shot and they come out at a press conference and Al Haig come out, push the man on the podium to the side, press secretaries, I'm in charge here. And start talking and telling the people what was going to take place. This is what Israel does to its shepherds. When they're trying to teach Everything ain't for everybody. When it's time to go full speed ahead, I guarantee you, you'll know it. And watch and see if nationwide, wherever we are, you won't see all the shepherds that are guided by the Ruach do the same thing. Right now, we are so happy with a little bit of knowledge. We're willing to share it with everybody, but we haven't mastered it. How do you know we haven't mastered it? Because if we've mastered it, our living gets so much better, so much greater. Our zeal for love for one another becomes so evident that even the heathens will look at you and know those are Yahweh's people. Look at how they love each other. Look at how they cover one another. With the smallest of resources, you can disperse and do different things and help one another. You hear what I'm saying? Right now, everybody just want to be seen talking and looking like they know. I'm loving and enjoying right now a lot of brothers jumping out in the front pretending that they know because they run an excellent cover for me. Excellent cover. But when the time comes that they have to step up and grab at the shepherds of Yahweh, the shepherds have to do exactly what Yahshua did. When they came to get him, he asked, whom seekest thou? They let him know we're looking for Yahshua of Nazareth. He says, I am he. And immediately they were knocked down. Imagine that, Yisrael. You come with such a foul, evil intention that when the man does reveal who he is and you come to get him to prove to you that Yahweh's real, let's put it in street terms so everybody understands. He knocked them on their ass. Do you understand me? Don't think it wasn't a shock to them. And somebody recorded it because we all read it. That's power. He knocked them down and Yahweh had to withdraw his Kodesh presence from that vessel. And in the Hebrews day, we give out him reject the Messiah. Well, who you got? I tell you what, if you reject the Messiah, put yourself up there in his place then. You step up and save the nation. You see, that's what some Hebrews do. They don't believe in the Messiah. But yet, the white world looks up and realizes, Russia's president said, he didn't say Yahshua, he ain't come to that point yet. But he plainly said, we will no longer for those of us that worship under that umbrella, we will no longer worship a white Jesus. We submit to black Jesus. That's what he told them. Now, we ain't into the Jesus thing. And I, I humbly request those of you all that haven't fully come to the knowledge of the name yet, don't be putting them Lord and God things in my text message y'all be sending me and Lord me and Jesus and me in them emails. No, when you talk to me, talk in Yahshua. When you talk to us, talk in Yahweh, when you typing up on that channel, please, we're going to be mild with you, what have you, but please put the sacred name up there because it is sacred. It is valid. You wouldn't have no $6,000. No, no, I'm sorry. That's cheap. What are they? $25,000 presidential Rolex. And somebody run up and give you a $99 Timex. You would not... <clears throat> Tell your, tell your butler, <clears throat> get that, uh, give me that cheap Timex. Put that on my arm. I'm a fashion with this. No, you wouldn't. You'd want that best looking watch that you got as expensive as it is. You'd want that. Then it's the same with Yahweh and Yahshua. These are the only names under heaven whereby we can be saved. The, this is expensive to us. This is holiness to us. This ain't no knockoff to us. So we don't want to address that. But as the world addresses it and comes to understand, then it's on us as Israel 
to promote the sacred name of Yahweh and Yahshua all the more. You hear what I'm saying? Israel don't pay attention to the works of the devil. How do you think you got so many pronunciations of the name now? What's my first name? Say it again. Say it again. Okay, some saying it in Hebrew, some saying it in English. Either way, it ain't it ain't getting ain't nobody yell out. You come out the do. Nobody said that, right? Everybody said it either in English or in Hebrew. It don't change, right? The name carried over is Yahshua. How do you think the devil come at Israel now? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Da. Yahweh. All of these different pronunciations now. Almost all Israel, you look at all of them and say, now, how do you arrive at all of this? Because after a while, the pronunciation gets so vague and so far out, when you ask people to document it, they can't. Don't dare ask them, go to the older scrolls. They want to send you a clip or a soundbite or a, what you call that thing? A meme. Yeah, they want to send you a meme. No, let's go to the older record. Because when Vladimir and the boys opened the vault, they ain't pull out no cassette tape, no CD, no meme. They pulled out old records, old scrolls, old Bibles. They pulled out all the older stuff that people had. Not this newfangled stuff. I sent you the link. <laughs> then they turn right around and tell you that there's a missing link between man and whatever. And it turns out to be a damn monkey. They ain't, don't they say he the missing link? The monkey sitting in the zoo like, well, damn. If I'm that great, why am I behind these bars? I didn't rob anybody. So, Yisrael, we have to play, pay attention. I pull out a lot of the older tracks for the Assemblies of Yahweh. I'm going to tell you also, don't write no tracks. Various Assemblies, and they be excellent and be the truth. And let me get my hands on them. Don't write them and let me get my hands on them. Because, see, if it's public record and it's the truth, I'm going to teach from it. I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to verify it and I'm going to substantiate it. All except one now I no longer have the right to hold that one up because he says it's lies and this, that, and other. It was 100% true. So I ain't going to never throw it away. It is the truth. However, look at this. Resurrection. Was it on Sunday? Yahweh's Assembly of Messiah, 401 North Roby Farm Road, Roachport, Missouri. Okay? White folks. But it's the truth. I've read through it. And 99% of what they got in here, I saw one thing I didn't agree with, but 99% of what they got in here is pulled straight out of the scriptures. You use anybody's data and material and substantiate it and show it when they're uplifting the name of Yahweh. But if I, now, 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 now this is where people are waking up and coming to the knowledge of this. Jehovah's Witness, they at least had Passover supper. They had the right date. Can't take nothing from them on that. They had the right date. They didn't go and keep Feast of Unleavened Bread or anything like that, but they just had the Memorial Supper. If you read in the book about the Memorial Supper, then I don't know how you don't read that now that supper is going to extend itself for seven days as a memory of the time frame that you come up out of Egypt. This is how. When you ain't of it, you can't cover it. You feel me? This is your culture. This is your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding in the sight of the nation. And this is what Israel has to come to understand. This is why I said that the last 24 hours of Yahshua's life was so important because not only was he painstakingly walking with Israel to patch up every hole and no outlet so as the souls of those that sought salvation, <laughs> there was no room for escape. He patched up all escape holes and no entry points for wickedness. His last 24 hours told the whole story. Now, after the Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread, we got to delve back into those 40 days that he was on the earth. We really, we as Israel in these last days must know and understand what took place because just 10 days prior to the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh upon Israel, upon the apostles, 10 days prior to that, he left them. He departed. Now, 
The Malachim standing there asked them. They knew, but you know, why, why, why y'all, why y'all staring up in heaven? What's, what's going on? You do know that the same Yahshua that went up will come also in like manner. So, and you, you know, I want you to understand how they were talking to the people. It's like you knowing something and you explaining it to somebody that you know knows this. So then you ain't going to talk to them like they don't know. You'll say, why, why are you? And say somebody holding the scriptures and they just so amazed. They just keep looking at you. You're going to say, why are you looking at that book like that? You do know that that is the Torah and that it leads to the way of salvation. You do know that if you open and live by it, you will receive. That's how you're going to kind of talk to them, right? So they was letting them know, hold now. You do know that in the same manner that he went, he shall come in like manner. He reassured them. Standing there perfect in white. Standing before, you know it had to be gleaming. One no uh, label tag on it, Liz Claiborne, none of that stupid stuff. He let them know, oh, he's coming. This is how you catch Israel in a lack of faith. We don't believe nothing. We don't see nothing. We don't understand nothing. We read what we want to read. There are people now that believe that we are, how can you put this? Ben Ami started this. What year Ben Ami died? 2003? Somebody do me a favor real quick. Google Ben Ami's death. And the reason why I'm asking you Google it, I want to know when he died. Because roughly 10 years prior to his dying, he was teaching something that wasn't true. Ben Ami was telling... Uh, That's the point I'm trying to get to, but I don't have my phone here with me to Google it. So I'm going to need you real quick, since you volunteered for the job. 2014? I believe it is. 2014, okay. What he was teaching the people in uh, one of the last books he written about the Messiah what he was teaching is that we are in the post-judgment era, meaning he was saying we are past the judgments and Armageddon and all of that. We are in the peaceful stage now. We are in the kingdom age. In other words, like it's unfolding now peacefully. That was wrong and it was in error. So here we are now, 10 years after his death, people are saying this is the millennium. And if that were true, where's Yahshua? Where is <clears throat> your home going? And why haven't the heathens fallen? See, the scripture says that we have breathed out cruelty and we have conceived as it were and have brought forth wind. He said that further, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. So the scripture says, in the days of these kings shall the Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom on earth. What Yahweh's people must come to understand is that Britain did this. They beat down almost all the kings and the monarchies of the earth. And any country that still has a king or monarch worth anything right now, they are, they are afraid enough to stay humble and pay homage to that thing in London. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? See, you can't dispute me if you haven't studied it. You got to have read the right material and know enough of the world history to know that this is how everybody, all the Fortune 500 companies of America and the top 2,000 of the world, I've looked at it, they have this tithing-like mechanism. They give a specific man an honorary seat on the board. There's no way this man can attend all these corporate meetings because you'll never be home. You'll fly around the world going to all these board meetings for the rest of your life. So 2,000 on a global scale, 500 top 500 in America and others, they pay an homage, an honorary tithe to the queen while she died. So who that honorary 10% go to? And how does this person arrive at such great stature that all the world corporations that don't believe in nothing, atheistic to the core, no, pay homage to something? 
unless y'all was people have researched it, you don't understand. Other kings came to this king's coronation because they were knowing this is it. This is the time. This is the signal. Certain things haven't fallen in place yet, which is why I said, don't rejoice just yet. Okay, Putin just opened the vault. But Putin, like Trump, he's still fighting them off. And he can't win. The only winner is Yahshua. You understand? This is why I kept on saying, uh, 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 back up off of that white on white violence. Let them fight it out. No, no, you all did it. There will be no Christmas addicts from the Hebrew Israelite community. Okay? We ain't stepping out there saving you. We ain't taking no hot ones for you. We ain't interfering in your business. We understand now that it's about to be about our father's business. So all these nations pay homage to a man who collects all this money, whether they bring it in cash or whatever the case may be. If you've read the right information and study it, you'll understand they store their stuff in vaults over there in Westminster Abbey and other stuff. They keep certain celebrated uh, British people from around the world. Any major Brit that did some type of accomplishment, even what's the old boy name in the wheelchair uh, that died? Uh, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking was Brit. Where he buried at? It took his body back over to Westminster Abbey, okay? These, these people, the, the most vicious white supremacists on the planet, playing like the other tribe of Judah, okay? The most vicious that there are, honor their dead because they swear up and down they're you. So you got to understand that if this is the king and all them in on it, believing that this man is going to one day take the throne and rule the world in the place of the Messiah, now you can understand why all of them pay homage to him because we don't want your program to go underfunded at all. Does that make sense? See, unless somebody studied this and really got a revelation from Yahweh to put it out there so Israel can see it, ain't no whole lot you're going to do. Getting on with all this knowledge and information, it ain't like you going down some corporation with a bunch of signs. You know that's the most we do anyway. We protest stuff. I don't know who manufactures the signs and the um, magic markers, but they make plenty of money off of black folk. Whenever we get mad, we make a sign, we march, and we sing. Those, do three, those three things are guaranteed, right? Tell me I'm lying. You know black folk. What are we going to do? March, sing, and hold sign. Somebody going to come out with some pork chop. You know, somebody can come out cooking while you protesting. Got to have that. But anyway, my point is this. What is it with all these nations that they know to pay homage to if they ain't all in on some sort of mind control? Shaitan has the mind of the nations if they all quietly agree to it. And here we know our Redeemer lives. He just has not shown yet. And yet they're championing the car. This is why the man was so enraged with his son. You don't, we this close and you flip out on me now. He was enraged, but he got the one that's loyal. If Yahweh's people don't know it and understand it, we'll miss out on some things. Okay, the false prophet is the one that claimed he got all this stuff on. He knows he got all the power of the Most High right here on earth. Ain't that what he say? The Pope holds all the power, quote unquote, all the power of God within himself. Okay, well, why are you sick? Right? We stomp our toe. We, ah, it's all over. Holler the pain out. You sick. Heal yourself, cast it out the window, do whatever, heal yourself, make yourself vibrant, Francis, or Francine, or whatever, you ever, depending on which one is speaking. Isn't that what they cast to Yahshua's teeth? Physician, heal thyself. You've healed others, come down. Well, when he come down, they're going to regret it. Because all that talking behind his back, it ain't going to fly. So if it's in the days of these kings that he'll set up a kingdom on heaven, on earth, that shall never be destroyed, is what Daniel said, and shall not be left to other people. Who then are the other people? The white woman did her video. She mad that Putin unleashed the vault. Her, I don't believe that Jesus was an African-American. Well, I agree with you on that. I don't believe it either. <laughs> you ain't said nothing. That map right there shows an interest in people. 
If y'all look on that map, you see all those colors of the nations, starting with the green from the first chapter of Genesis. I'm my grandson. We're going over that Genesis story and some things the other day. That map in the middle, I'll walk you and Isaiah and Jeremiah. I'll walk you over and show y'all that later. You need to know something about that. It shows the origins of all the people on the planet. But somewhere right around that back section right there, the colors change. There's one little purple line. That little purple line, different than all the colors. Because you see green, you see a light orange, you see a sky blue. But there's one little purple line. And I think the purple line picks up the date as 1619. Because a new people just popped up in the earth. A new people called African American. African American. So where does African American people come from? What two people had sex to make an African and an American? You understand? What was the, who was the American and who was the African? That when their baby was born, they just decided this is an African American. You know, he probably sounds just like James Earl Jones. This is CNN. But right there, in somewhere in that region, I ain't sure where it is. I can't see it where I'm at. But somewhere up in there is a purple line. And it shows the African-American community just popped up in 1619. Now, all these white folks mad because Putin showed what was in the vault any damn way. See, this is what gets you in trouble when the scripture says some people going to hell, and especially those whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Now, their forefathers made the lie. They, as their children, are loving the lie and do not want the truth to come out. So we came here in 1619. They took our scriptures, translated everything. Yahweh has a sense of humor, too. Y'all want to see a good joke? Something real funny? Turn to your Bible. Jeremiah, chapter 16 and verse 19. Since the African-American popped up in 1619. All right, let's look at what's going to happen to y'all based on 1619. Because see, you beat Yahweh, Yahshua, out of us. You wouldn't allow our parents to pray in the name of Yahweh. Okay, Jeremiah, in his prayer. What's the matter, dear brother? Oh, people want to see the map? Let me see if I can come on down. Try not to disconnect nothing, but... Here we go. You gonna, they're going to see the map. Let me walk over here real quick. Might as well get in the picture too, right? Where is that? Is that it there? What that say? African American. Here it is. Let's put this on. Hold my hand real steady. Now, this is a map called World History Timeline. I don't know who made it, but they did it. Uh, Emma and y'all donated a second one to the assembly. It's in the men's room. It was more updated. It was just as beautiful. It was laminated, and we would swap these out. But for right now, look at this. Here you go. Everybody else got a timeline. This is Adam, Abel, Cain. This shows all the different nations, all of the green. From the beginning of time, walk them all the way around here to, what's the date? 2000, right? Okay. Here you got all these people. Ham, you got uh, j -Pap, the blue, uh, all the white folks, blue, all this. Anyway, here you get some purple stuff, all of this. But we get this strange color, African-American, right here, A.D. 1619. So just a new people popped up. Look at them. No lineage. You don't find none where you trace them around. They just popped the hell up. You know what I'm saying? Just poof. Yeah, the magic dragon. This is Steely Dan hour. They night when they chase the dragon. So now you get mad at Putin. Or Poot, depending on who's mad with him. You know, Biden was mad with him when he went in and attacked Ukraine. He did the news interview. He said, well, Poot is the aggressor. I'm like, you can call the man Poot. He's going to disrespect the man like that. Uh, you wouldn't say that to his face. Now, everybody know Putin. Martial arts expert, former KGB, straight up killer. Uh, it's so, you ever see him walk? You, Putin walk like this. He just, you, you, you know he one of them ones where he'd go in the gas station and get his own cigarette. Secret Service and everybody, he'd jump out the limo, go get it himself. I saw an interview in Russia where they interviewed him right at a BP Solar. And you could tell it was BP Solar because of the green and the white. I'm like, okay, they still doing it all around the world. Putin stand right there and did an interview. Yeah. But he said something about America and their leadership and all this. It was funny. I'm like, check him out. Just did an interview live at the gas station, 8.35 at night. Now you and I, 
in America, we don't, how many of y'all pump gas at night? That's my point. Most of us know, go to gas station, get your gas in the daytime. Gas, preferably in the morning when the hoodlums ain't woke, right? Okay, just checking. Just got to take precaution. People say, well, if Yahweh is with you, no, don't tempt Yahweh. You know, don't, don't, don't play with Yahweh on thing. If you know the world has changed and dangers and different things, then don't tempt Yahweh, okay? You know, you got evil people. Stuff you could do years ago, you can't do now. But years ago, you could do certain stuff. And I met the, what the minister's book, man. Boy, that, let me put the book over there. Anyway. <laughs> Doth thou dare do with me like that? <laughs> no water next to you. Jeremiah 16, 19. Listen to this. O Yahweh, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles. All right, now this y'all. This what you got coming. The Gentiles shall come unto you from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies. Vanity and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself and they are no gods? I'll use that term in that instance because there are no gods. It's Yahweh and Yahweh alone. Hallelujah. Now let's add some clarity because you got Hebrews that don't believe in the Messiah. And they'll say, yep, yeah, uh-huh, that's right. Now you're talking, shut your face. He said, I and my father are one. Don't go running to the scripture where he says, I am Yahweh and there is none else beside me. I heard a minister preach that one time. See, see that verse? He says, there's none beside me. He, he thinking he means right here beside me. So as he was saying it, I was looking at him. You know, how, see, sometimes this is how you got to do people. When people say something that's so dumb, do not rebuke them. Silence is gold. Sometimes people do something so dumb, you got to just give them a the look. You just got to. You got to give them that look that says, I can't believe you're that dumb. So let me tell you what he did. He said that. He said some other thing. Then they put a woman up to preach. So pulpit, little podium, similar to this. You just had enough room for, I think it was four chairs. Because I was in the first chair, which was here. He was sitting in the second chair. The podium was right there. And there were two other chairs to his side. I think there was another elder on his other side. Anyway, they got a woman come up there in the little ushers, the little white nurse's uniform, whatever, the white stocking, the white shoes, the whole night. She reading the scripture. And the scripture says, I should not bring no ox, no donkey. And I'm like, no, say what's there. See, some of us are so prim and proper, we think we're cursing when we see those words in the book. So she wouldn't say ass. She said, ah, I'm a donkey. Eh, 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 eh. I ain't say nothing. I just look. But what I found intriguing was he couldn't contain himself. Because she's standing there. Her hips were right at face level. So he just looking. And I mean happy looking. So I'm sitting next to him. And I was like this now. That's how they do, just straight eyeballing them. And I'm thinking to myself, see, you ain't no man of Yahweh. And I peeped it on that. You ain't got no business eyeballing a woman like that. She ain't your wife, brother. Man, you got to keep your eyes when thou goest about the town. It is written in the word. Now, how do you teach that in the 20th century to young people in the sacred name? Young men sitting here, 10, 12 young men sitting right there. How would you get that across to them? You got to speak to them in a language that they understand. I don't necessarily mean Bulgarian, but you got to tell them straight out the gate, brother, you can't be butt watching, titty watching, ass watching. You say it in a language where they understand. Then you can help them and clean them up. When you keep trying to clean up stuff, and oh, well, thou keep thine eyes means make sure you uh, don't walk into anything. Don't get poked in the eye. Uh, it, he may, another verse tell you, don't be taken with the beauty of a woman and her eyelids. Don't be gawking. He teach a man how to conduct himself. But if you're an elder and you can't do it. So I just looked at him. I didn't say nothing. So Israel, they know me. We go certain places and stuff, get the cutting up too bad. They know me. I got a code. They, they, anybody be with me, hear them keys jingling. People hear that. They know what that means. I mean, I'm ready to go. 
That's just our personal code. Huh? Sweet. I do that on a job in a heartbeat. Brothers be talking to me and it's time to go. I hit that remote start. They look back. Boom, boom, truck started up. They be like, oh, you ready to go? I be like, <laughs> get on out of there. There ain't no whole bunch to that. So Yisrael has to know all of this is not in vain. We can't take this word of Yahweh and just make it a racial issue all day, every day. That's all the Hebrews do now is fight and argue with the white people about being the chosen people. Okay, we have pronounced that enough that they know it. And if they didn't hate us, they hate us now for sure. But now the work gets more strenuous and yet so beautiful because, see, now you got to live it. You arguing about race and all this stuff. Haven't I been saying for long? You ain't got to argue with no Jews about no Passover when they let them keep it when they keep it. They can make all the matzahs they want to make. Yeah, you keep your matzahs. We know how to make unleavened bread. This is common sense now. We bake this stuff and eat it, and it turn out however it turn out. You ain't got to be all fashioned up and all squared up. And mm, mm, oh, come on, we ain't with that. That's you. That's you. Okay, fine. Keep your matzah. You don't want us celebrating and doing nothing. No way. Did y'all see the Wall Street Journal yesterday? I got it yesterday for free. They did something that was funny. And um, the brother in the store, I, I'll pay for my stuff. My stuff might come up to $20 and 89 cent every morning, 21, whatever. He always rounds it off. 20, give me 20. Because then when I buy stuff and it comes to 1875, I'll say, leave it in. So me and him always do that out of kindness. African brother, I love him dearly. He loved me back. So anyway, yesterday, the Wall Street Journal was paying homage to the news reporter that was uh, locked up in Russia. So the front page of the paper said his story should be here. And where they would have ran the story, it was just blank. So neither one of us thought to flip the paper over to see where the barcode was because the barcode was on the second page. So anyway, we said, well, ain't no barcode. He said, well, then that edition must be free. Take it. Go. So later that day, I got to the job. I was like, oh, okay, this was, had we look, opened it, we, he could have scanned it. So I'm going to let him know Monday or Tuesday, Tuesday. I'll let him know, yeah, I owe you for that paper. Anyway, point being, I opened the front page up. It's about 30 Jewish dudes, the ultra-Orthodox Jews. I, 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 you know the ones with the big hat, the big square hat, the big round hat with the little boots, look like uh, Crocs or something. I don't know what they was wearing on their feet. And just all of them dressed alike. I'm, I'm, I, I ain't going to say, I'm sorry. Don't look holy to me. You can say what you want to say. You can get offended if you want. You don't look Kodesh to me. You just look like a bunch of people dressed a certain way so that everybody can recognize you. What were they in line for? Trying to get a military exemption. See, they ultra orthodox. I don't want to be in no war. I don't want to be fighting. I don't want to be killing. I'm a punk. I mean, I don't want to fight. That kind of stuff. Anyway, watch I get a letter from somebody based on that. Anyway, they don't want to fight. But me and you move over there and become Israeli citizens. Is, uh, uh, military draft and all that stuff is mandatory for us. How the hell you get an exemption? And why are you so scared? Your people are the meanest people on the planet. You make bombs and guns and missiles and all this stuff. See, they sell stuff around the world. Y'all ain't understanding. All their money don't come from America. They got military places over there like Raytheon. Uh, north of Grumman, uh, Lockheed Martin. The Jewish community has that same stuff over there. They manufacture bun bombs, guns, and weapons, missiles, and they have a perpetual testing ground for their weapons. That's why when they market their stuff to other countries, they always say battle tested because they tried it out on the Palestinians first. So this is why they, I don't know, ceasefire. We, our man on the throne now. This thing getting ready to kick off. Yeah, we bad. We bad. People ain't understanding what they kicking up. And they worse than Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. Because, see, they are blood. You, you know Gene Wilder and Richard but both they both two chumps in the movie, the way it was played, right? They worse than them two. Because these are bloodthirsty. Get mad and assassinate your leaders, kill people and do all kind of stuff. Israeli Massad said, if you speak one word against us, know for certain we will kill you. That is in the book called uh, Rise and Kill First. See, y'all with people, you have to pray against people like that. You have to curse their dirty damn soul in the name of Yahweh. And that's what the world is afraid of, that once you wake up and start praying like you ought to pray, no more of that, we shall over. 
Come. I'm sick of that now. Say it with the V like you should say it in the English language. Now, don't, don't get misconstrued with the V and when our people do say overcome because that is a Hebrew thing, okay? We say Tav night. Some of them of the Germans say Tav. Get it? A lot of the words in scripture that were pronounced with the B, they come in with the V. And there was a lot of that was from them racist Nazi Germans and all this other stuff. You got to understand, Hitler was talking about one Reich, one Zeit, one Ziva like. You got to understand, they had their words with the V. Mm-hmm, see? Following the Germans and don't know. You have to throw their dirty culture away on every aspect. When you are following Yahweh, the more you come to this way of life, the more all foreign and alien stuff, you have to throw it away from you. That's all there is, right? Sisters, never mind. Put it like this. Anybody that's ever worn the miniskirt or the ham spankers or spandex or whatever, when you come to the knowledge of Yahweh, don't you get up off of that stuff and just leave that stuff alone? You move on and it ain't even no grave addiction to you, right? Right? You, you, hey, any visitors, do not try me. You visit, you visit. The women here are properly clad, heads covered, no breasts ready to jump out, no thighs, boobs, and all this stuff showing. They are properly clad. So don't, don't come here and try me. Well, he said come as your eyes. Yeah, well, okay, well, liquor store over there said the same thing. I want you all to understand, we throw away anything that's foreign and alien to this way of life. And we just calm down and live it. We don't have to just uh, walk a proper and primer way now. Just, oh, he, he, look at that Hebrew. He got that Hebrew walk, man. Yay. Look at her. She got that Hebrew woman walk. Uh, 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 uh. We walk according to Torah. We don't have to do nothing to make ourselves overly stand out you know what i'm saying you don't have to overly shine in nothing you shine automatically anyway okay you automatically yahweh's spirit and presence upon you. the world know you different that tells you how many y'all got job where, where you always the sore thumb how many y'all got job where you always the black sheep how many y'all got family and family gathering where you always the one where you different than everybody else yahweh yahweh's people are different our problem, we be trying to fit in, try to dress like the world and be like them and all. No, we're automatically different anyway. And what Yahweh sees as beauty of holiness and perfection, we get afraid because the world tries to hate on it and try to make you feel bad for dressing and wearing your clothing and being modest. But Yahshua wasn't some construction worker. My, we, we saw some stuff on TV the other day, Bible stories, another thing the other day. And... uh. My shaw turned to me and she said, look at that. You know, always got the head and one nipple out. And said, yep, they, that's them. Married women in the building. How many women in the building married or have ever been married would want their husband dressed like we dressed in ancient day with a robe? Now, he just for some reason got the head that left nipple hanging out. Now, you a construction worker. You working with a, 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 a hammer and a chisel. Now, you put safety glasses on and everything. But sometimes stuff fly. Little, little things fly, right? You go home wounded. Oh, see, baby, what's wrong? I was chipping on stone and it jumped down and hit my nipple. Oh. But my, but my eyes was okay because I had my safety glasses on. See, we don't understand. Y'all was people weren't modest. Some people have such freaky psychosexual fantasies it has to be addressed. Remember the little fat dude at Nickelodeon that was molesting all them children? Doing all this stuff. What was Nickelodeon's uh, 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 logo? A foot. And what did he have? He had a foot fetish. He had a fetish for children's feet. Fat bastard. Didn't he? Had... That, that's, that's serious, see? And they all knew. So they, ch they changed it. Changed it from the foot to the Epstein Island. So, so their enterprise was growing. And they was essentially just celebrating. And then here come one of us. <laughs> just. And people around, they feel for this brother. 
at that intelligence that Vivon stopped. She had slapped his face when he first emerged. But no, they want your children to be rappers and all this other stuff. We That's why uh, Hebrews get mad at me because some of this stuff, sometimes I have to talk to them about it or explain in a way where, no, you keep your children away from culture like that. Wanting to be movie stars and all this other stuff. Everybody tell you about the oak tree, the oak table and all this stuff. You get in and sign your contract at the table. They all tell you what goes on and what goes down. Come on, man. They, they let you know nobody's getting in the industry without doing something. They're going to get some film footage on. Hey, your children, they want to be movie stars. Remember that? Beverly Hillbilly, swimming pools, movie stars. Then they put bung, 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 and Jed didn't fit in. But yet he was it. See, Hollywood is the sickest, most sadistic aspect of American and now global culture. Because this is where you get to play out all your wicked satanic fantasy. All your sexual frustration and confusion has a legitimate outlet somewhere in that. And Yahweh's word told you don't be like that. Now, watch this. For you that like sex, okay, it's in Yahweh's word. Get a wife. Get a husband. You like sex? Prove it to me as almighty Yahweh. How? I gave you permission. I said, be fruitful and multiply. Okay? So he gave his people permission. No, what we got to do, well, I don't want the multiply part. I like the, 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 the growth, the, the fruit part, especially if I get to be fruity. That's the world now. So you don't hear nobody condemn them and come down on their culture like that because ain't nobody going to say that. You got old oh, fat geezer. Have you ever been swallowed? How is it you ain't bring that up till you come from one of them puffy parties? You understand? The hell is wrong with them? And we sit back and, won't you say nothing me in my TDJ? We whoop you and TD. Bring them in here. See, some of that stuff, you need old crazy shepherd and Yahweh. Somebody like Peter, just straight out, draw the sword. Ain't even no talking. Just straight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here, pick that up since you like being Suwalu. Boop. Here, take that with you. You all figure that out. Uh, figure that out later. But anyway, you all think Peter wouldn't drop them? Yeah. Peter got an ear. I know good well he wouldn't have no problem. Yeah. See, see, <laughs> see, you got to love men like Peter and Jahu, David, men that just straight with the sword. What? Huh? What? <laughs> oh, man, no, no, not him. Uh, well, uh, sorry, man. Hey, man. Hey. Here, put it back. <laughs> Today, we try to go along with everything and everybody. That's how, that's how we try to do. Try to go along with everything. And then the, then the industry now want to call it hate speech. Now, you got to know how to talk to people like them. If there is any victim in hate, it's you. You hate what you were born. So then those that were born like you speak against it. You lie and say, you're hating on me. No, technically, it's sad. Socially, you all do it in such a way where it's funny. See, now even the gays and lesbians, they don't like each other now. So in the total realms of confusion, they fighting each other. How, how, how does somebody deal with you now? You were born this gender. You cut it off and become the opposite of whatever you were. But you were and are what you were from the get-go. Now you're mad because they clipped it and threw it away. Now you want it back and want to jump back. Who got time for that kind of confusion? You can't, you can't even register the thought. Wait a minute. So, wait a minute. So, you were, you were a man? Yeah, I used to be. So, now you're a woman? No, I'm, 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 uh, I'm scheduled to get it back. I'm, uh, never mind. That's how they do. Just total confusion. And the lesbians, they, they got to be the worst. They don't even understand it. Let me see if I got this straight. You're a woman. You hate men. So you go get a woman. Now, in order to be in this relationship with this woman, one of you 
has to play like a man. And that ain't confusion. And they don't, they, they, they don't like, sometimes it's funny, when you, especially when you know what you're doing. And you, I talked to one one time, and she was like, yeah, that, that's my girl. So I kept looking back between them. I just said to myself, man, this is too much for me. What's wrong? I ain't nothing. All right, man, I'm out of here. Just like that. All right, man. I'm out. Now you're offended because you understand that I'm saying, all right, man, I'm out of here. In a sense of calling you a man disrespectfully. But yet, you want to be a man. Are y'all as confused as I was? And you mean to tell me we want to stay in a world where they're making laws for you to not be able to speak against that? While we rejoice that the world is waking up to the color of the Messiah, we can't rejoice just yet because y'all don't woke up to be obedient to what he told you to do and what he was sent to live based upon what he was. He was the Torah. Just the fact that you all marred his visage more than any man and then lied about it, his last day on the earth sealed the fate specifically for Yisrael, where all they have to do is believe and obey. How difficult is that? Give me the remote and give me three instructions. I'm done. Sit down. Hit menu. Scroll down and go into settings. All right. I got the hit menu. I got the scroll. Third instruction, I'm done. So it's the same thing with them now. You want all these rights and you want to be respected on this level and that level in your right to be a man who used to be a woman who is now trying to get back to be a man. And you got all this woe, so you don't know if you are a man or a woe man, but you want to bring all your woe to those who know and won't follow. It's stupid. And if it sounds dumb, it was meant to sound dumb. This specific time of the year, this is the part of the year I, I despise because everybody call themselves trying to honor him. Now watch them Sunday morning. They get up and go to church, go hunt for Easter eggs. and yeah, yeah. Mary Sue, Easter eggs. Mary Sue. Who the hell is Mary Sue? Oh, they was out there yesterday? Good friend. Now see, that that's a concept y'all was people really got to beat. And, 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 little track here. They, they got a little schedule of it. Good Friday. This is the funny part. They slam dunk them. Let me find it. Give me a minute, Israel. Uh, they slam dunk them. Because all the stuff that we as Yahweh's people should know, they put it out. Here you go. Your traditional view of the resurrection. <clears throat> the above chart shows what is traditionally believed by many Christians. Our Savior said the only sign to be given that he was a Messiah was that he would be three days and three nights in the tomb. Can you count three days and three nights between Friday evening burial and a Sunday morning resurrection? It just cannot be done. I like that. That's what the writer said. It cannot be done. I like to hear the Christian preachers when they do it, especially when they try to get a count. Years ago, Harold Carter Sr., he would give the count and he would do it. And he was crucified on Good Friday, and he was in the grave third day, and he rose Sunday. So see, you say three words, and you think you got three days and three nights. <laughs> Dumb. So you mean to tell me you murder a man on a Friday, bury him in the ground. Today is the Shabbat. Sunset. 10, 30, 11, 30 at night. He's still in there now, according to them. 2 o'clock in the morning now. He's still in there, according to them. 4 a.m. He's still in there, according to them. But just as the sunrise, Sunday morning, they jump up and go do a sunrise service. And everybody, see all those non-book reading? Now, now, now I'm going to prove to you all that they are all liars. They will get a pack of medication, prescription, a Billify, a Guardian, or anything, sing and dance, make a commercial about it, and read the label. But won't read the book. Isn't that amazing? 
won't read the book. So when you tell Yahweh's people, I like the fact that a lot of white folks did wake up to it. What really hurts us the most about white folks is that they, they, they don't understand genetics. How if their fathers were liars, a lot of times they're going to try to remain liars too. They will tell half-truths. See, the CIA has a term for that. In fact, the other day I was leaving the studio and I stopped in the truck long enough. I was uh, researching something. I looked up something and this uh, CIA word book definitions came up. And I was just looking at some of the stuff they got in the book. And there's this term called limited fallout or limited disclosure. Meaning, let's say you asking me some questions and I'm not under interrogation, but you asking questions where I'm obligated to tell you. So now I give you limited disclosure where I really don't want to tell you, but I'm going to tell you enough to shut you up so that you don't keep asking me more and more questions because then I'm liable to tell you the whole truth. So they come with this thing called limited fallout or limited disclosure where we tell you just enough to shut you up. Like Pootie. He was black. But you're still saying Jesus. What is his name again? Vladimir Putin. How you say that in English? <laughs> Y'all should have seen the look on Sister Nell's face. <laughs> that was perfect because it was one of them looks where it's Vladimir Putin. I'm not going to let up off of my point. <laughs> Which is exactly the point I was trying to make. His name has to be pronounced the same all around the world, right? So how do you open the vault? Knowing that now this is all in the books you found, but you still going to hold on to Jesus. A man that was Hebrew, whose mother hadn't been to Greece. But you going to hold on. To, see, it's limited fallout. I come out, tell you half the story to stop you from pressing me about the whole story. You get it? Some people just happy getting half enough, like, like the wife uh, with the cheating husband. Do you love her? No, it was just a fling. Oh, well, okay then. Other questions should be like, what are you going to do? Are you going back? Are you straightening up? Do I have to bust your head? Different question. No, just the do you love her. As long as you don't love her thing, that suddenly smooths it over. No, it's the limited fallout to keep you quiet. So now you tell him that he was black. Okay, tell them his name. Because see, if you run up on Vladimir Putin and call him Joe Biden, he ain't going to answer you. Now, they might put hands on you. But that ain't his name. So, well, I, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I give say, how come the green paint ain't turned purple? You know, how come the red paint ain't brown? You know, see, again, see how they lie? See, when lying is an intricately detailed part of your nature and all the stuff you've studied around the earth, you ever notice there are no studies on liars? Look up their books. Why do we lie? Somebody real quick, hit it, Google. Uh, give me the author of the book, Why We Lie So Much. Yeah, it hadn't been written, you know. So my point is, they will say anything just to shut you down. So right, we can see that he's black. All right, that's fine. That's fine. But but look, nigga, we ain't giving up this gold we got. Uh, we know that's your land. Yeah, we admit that he was black. All right, yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. Well, wait a minute. Over here in Israel, let me tell you something right now. Um, we've run a lot of DNA tests, and the tests have come back and proven that we have no connection to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and uh, we don't want that embarrassment. So therefore, uh, uh, don't do DNA testing over here. It's illegal. Why? If y'all say you're the chosen one, the only other question left now that everybody knows you ain't the chosen one, the only question left now is, who chose you? And now, based on what you do, the answer ain't hard, but let's see if you tell us who chose you. 
So Yahweh's people can't just rejoice just yet in Putin saying that. That's fine that he said it. It's beautiful that he said it. But that ain't the full story. They ran some graphics, uh, the Bible story of something we was watching the other day. My grandson had it on. We, I stopped and just the graphics of it was just so beautiful that I had to stop and watch this and look at And he had a billion questions. So I sat down on the floor with him. I said, yeah, yeah, this is the right time. This this time to catch him. So I answer all your questions. It was this scene where they had the white Adam standing there and he was just like, you know, uh, naked. He had a little fig leaf around him or whatever it was. Check, check this out now. This is how I caught him. He had the fig leaf, but the woman wasn't there. If you get where I'm going, right? Anyway, he's standing there. All the bugs, crabs, crawfish, every little thing, little uh, chameleons, all kind of stuff. Just hundreds of little animals on the ground. And he's standing there like this looking at him. His little fig leaf on. And believe me, it was a little fig leaf, but he was just looking. So I'm like, Check that out. You give the imagery of how Yahweh commanded everything to go to him. And whatever name that he named it was the name thereof. They go on in the story. Everybody was white. I think you said you saw one. Was it one black person? One black person. They even had Nimrod. Nimrod was pale white, man. Running around with a bush. Pale white. You know, they just. This is the stuff they cannot let the imagery go. And as Minister Johnson pointed out last night, when our scholars that don't even know Yahweh are blessed by the hand of Yahweh and guided to go find stuff, see it and understand it, and then come back and break it down for you, we tend to ignore them. When our shepherds see into it and Yahweh give them the ability to discern it and understand it and break it down and go further than the scholars went, we tend to ignore them. Because more often than not, we too want to hold on to that imagery. See, after a while, you train your mind's eye, you lock in on the name of Yahweh. But if the assemblies of Yahweh printing Bibles where they don't have footnotes and references and concordances and things, but they just have the name all through it, that's beautiful for beginners. But those of us that look at footnotes and references and things and double check behind your information as well, all those books may not necessarily have the name in it. But we have trained our eyes so well. Every time we see Lord, we don't see it. Because we know we see Yahweh. Every time. Yes, sir. Yes, he did. He said the same thing. But again, when you have the spirit of a liar. Remember the, the psychopathy of these people. The, the psychopathic personality abides by two rules. And the two rules are. This is my world. This is the way it's run. Accept this. Well, the second rule comes into place. I will kill you. No other option, no peaceful coexistence, except what I'm laying down or else I will kill you. That's the psychopathic personality of it. So Hitler got on them because they were gathering up things and was basically saying the same stuff today. These people are into some Satanism at a level many of you all don't understand. Which is why now, poor little black man, he, we have sinned and gone so far from Yahweh. We, as fathers and mothers, paved the way for puffies to rise. For little um, R. Kelly's and others to rise. Before we can condemn them, we have to understand the circumstances in our communities that paved the way that they would be able to rise. Because R. Kelly was victim of sexual abuse. So after so long of a time, he perceived that it was the right thing to be done. When he got older, then that's what he desired because that's what was done to him. Others, you start tracking it. That's why in Yahweh's word, that type of spirit within the community now, you didn't pray that spirit off of somebody. You had to slay that thing. Tell me I'm lying. Yahweh said there shall not be a sodomite or a catamite among the children of thy people. Catamite, little boys, little men that sleep with boys, like little boys. No, you got to be willing to stretch that thing out. They got laws now to protect themselves, and when you give them enough time, they'll switch the laws around so that they have the right to stretch you out. What did the man do in the, um, one of them counties? He, he delivering uh, Uber Eats. 
he go deliver food through big old thing coming in there to get the food. He 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 properly gendered the thing. They say he misgendered it. Then the thing attacked him. Then he shot the thing. And now he's sitting up in prison for a murder charge. He shot it, but then tried to give it mouth to mouth or whatever. What an irony. But anyway. I just thought about that. that uh, yeah, that was, a new, that, that was all in the news. Boy, he shot him, did CPR, and tried to get him mouth to mouth. And uh, so he probably was just laying there and never mind. Anyway. Th see how sick it is? So then everybody went out there and protested at the man house and everything. And, and of course, it's always us. One of us. I don't know whether it was a male or a female or a uh, I don't really know what it was, but I know it was leading the charge. They had him on the news, eyelashes out here. Just blink. He almost knocked the microphone out of Jeff Holgram's hand. He standing there trying to interview him. He blinked his eye. He hit the mood the mic around. Then you see his little hair. You know the Superman wave with the hair. Every time he blinked, the wind blowing. You know, this 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 is the stupid stuff we into. And they kept on pressuring and pressuring the judge till the judge that had given the man a high bail revoked the bail, and locked the man back up. So now two wives, I mean two wives, two lives are wrecked because of somebody's sexual frustrations, aggressions, falsehoods, lies, or whatever. So now it can't be sorted out until judgment. You understand? This is the stuff that goes, man. So this society, for Yahweh's people, there is room for one thing. In Yahshua's death, there's room for our repentance and our obedience unto him. That's why we know Yahweh commanded two things for us. Keep this Passover supper. For in this selfsame night, you came up out of the land of Egypt. That is the night of the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was the next night, the 15th night. They came out. He commanded that Israel remember this because you were down in Egypt. The poor little black woman talking about, I don't believe that Jesus is an African-American. All black people on the face of this earth, dumb dumbs, are not African American. That's a term you gave to us who were just so happy to keep being accepted. We accepted the term. That's that's the essence of what it is. We so if you look at us close, every 20 years we're changing our name. Remember, we was nigga, get to the back of the bus. Then we was colored folk. Then we were Negro. Then we were black. Then we were, well, spooks was the insult that they gave us. We, we didn't really call ourselves. They called us the spooks. But I'm talking about the stuff where we really readily identify. Even down to niggas. We identify with that now. We done, they had a spelling contest on one of them um, um, high schools. And you, you know how you do, you say the word three times. And they might actually say it in a sentence and use it in a sentence. And then the child got to spell it. So when they got to the African word, negus, little white boy got the word, negus. Could you spell it, please? No, no, yeah, I'm sorry. Can you use it in a sentence, please? Negus. There's such a thing. Negus is supposed to mean, uh, is it king or God? King. In what, in what language? Ethiopian. Negus. So you go in the room and say, what's up, niggas? African-Americans can't say nothing if they ain't from Ethiopia. And really, if they don't know their lineage, they can't stand them and say they kings, right? But here you got a little white kid in a spelling bee answering that. Now, can you imagine how scared a little kid would be in a spelling bee with me sitting on the front row? You, you, the look. Spell it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, give the definition. You know, but anyway, my point being, this is where Yahweh's people are. Learn this stuff, understand race, but don't lose your scriptural base on salvation. Don't keep sitting around arguing with them people about the color of the Messiah and all that. Pay them no mind. You know one thing that a psychopath hates more than anything else? Is to just be disregarded, totally ignored. Totally ignored. You know why? Because they got to be in control and in command. And when you ain't giving them the attention they need, they hate that. That's why, why you think they hated Malcolm X? Malcolm was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, we don't need you. Let's get away from him. 
He had that meeting with Martin King. He was trying to tell him, integration ain't the way. Martin, even in the end, said, I feel as though I've, I've, I've failed my people because I tried to in integrate them into a burning, abandoned building. Who wants to run into an empty, burning building? I need some shelter. I'm going to sleep. I don't know about y'all. Yeah, would it be the last sleep you ever get? But they don't like when you withdraw from them. I, I got to be honest, y'all. We know what the scripture said, but go back and read the context of what Yahweh said about how his house should be a house of prayer for all people. That's when the world gets cleaned up. That's when we all really start honoring Yahweh. And he take the spirit of foolishness up off of his people, the spirit of rebellion and all that up off of his people, the spirit of racial superiority, hostility, animosity, and tension up off of them people. When he breaks down that middle wall of partition between us, then can the house of Yahweh be a house of prayer for all people? Truth be told right now, white folk ain't going for it. I don't know how it was all coming across my news feed, but I was looking at all of it, different assemblies and stuff. I was paying attention to them. Wherever the white folks were, the black folks was in the pictures. We was in the back. We weren't looking super duper happy. Or if we were looking happy, we showed all the teeth in our head. Anybody know anything about life? That's a sign. When, when you're smiling around a bunch of white folks and you can every tooth in your head, you ain't super happy. You, you try and fool yourself. Them three elders, I forget what stated. Well, they stand there, old men with canes, man. They, they had the little canes standing. Didn't even look pure. <laughs> I thought it was ZZ Top. I ain't, hey man, I look, I would tell them to their face. Wouldn't disrespect them, but I'm straight out of the gate. They had the little beard, they were just standing. Three, I'm leaning on the canes, and I'm thinking to myself, I feel sorry if anybody that let y'all baptize them, because you somebody getting drowned. Little old men put you down. Well, you done. Can you get up on your own? See, we don't pay. See, question. Why does Hollywood now, in this late stage, let people make movies like Get Out? Why is it coming out now in this day? Get Out wouldn't have came out 50 years ago. He couldn't have made that 50 years. He probably couldn't have did it 30 years ago. Spike Lee barely got away with Do the Right Thing. Remember? See, remember when uh, Malcolm X came out? It, it, it kindled feelings again. People was looking different. And then they was like, oh, we got to do something. We got to do something different. Remember when Roots came out? People got beat up back in the 70s when Roots came out. People, people seriously got beat. Because you home looking at Roots every night for a week straight. You see uh, Kunta get his foot cut off. You kind of mad about that thing. You go to work the next day. What, Jeffrey? <laughs> yeah, oh, nothing, nothing. I was, I was passing out checks. You got a bonus, too. Jeffrey, you may get it. So I bring that out because we're in a time now where some of this stuff can no longer be contained. So as scripture unfolds, rather than preach it, I'll stay and talk to you all about it. As scripture unfolds, more and more of the truth has to come out. People after a while, y'all are going to be so ashamed of the things that your forefathers have done to us. Yahweh's word says you're going to bow down so low to us, you will lick the dust off our feet. That is not a joke to be looked at. Well, that's just a euphemism. Sure, euphemism, right? So then the devil ain't going to get burned. He just get cast into the lake. What, Lake Manitonka? See, if you're going to make euphemisms out of things that appear harmful to you, then make euphemisms out of the things you all did to us. Make, make, that, make that noose. Make it a euphemism. Make it stand for something good. The word we read clearly says, Cursed is everyone that is hanged on a tree. You hang the Messiah on a tree. Five times is it in scripture. Five times hanged on a tree. Another verse, he became a curse for us that we might obtain salvation. Now, come on, white folk. Ain't but one group of people on the planet have this affinity with ropes and trees and black men. Damn, you got married with a woman for singing about it because she was so hurt that she sang about and you demanded that she not sing. Y'all ain't say nothing to old Beyonce and none of them. Twerk it, twerk it, shake it, baby. Put a ring on it. You ain't say nothing to them with that garbage. But you rebuke somebody for singing about the trees down south 
give off strange fruit. Black men's body saying, man, please. I, I got to be honest with this. In, in, in visits and in fellowship, that's understandable and that's honorable. But this is me now. Let me stand up and say this so that nobody can say, he said in the Bible, because you know how y'all like to do me. You all will twist my words around and say I said this when I did not say it. And then the sad part is you have public record. You can go play it again and play it back and see what I said. So let me say this now. In those interracial marriages that we all so love, somebody somewhere going to yield something in their culture at some particular point in time. Somebody going to yield something. Now, I've been married for a minute. Told y'all before. I don't have to yield none of my culture to get along with my wife. She does not have to yield any of her culture to get along with me. But now here you are across the track, historically enemies, hostile and inimical to one another since the beginning of time to make it in a relationship. Somebody got to give up somebody's culture. Somebody got to submit and compromise. Somebody's got to be the dominant. How can these interracial marriages work if you all, I don't give a damn, you a white man. I don't give a flying squirrel. You have to give up your culture because your culture is detrimental to Yahweh, to Yahweh's people, to the planet Earth, and to everybody else. So how can you marry and take over this culture and way of life when you ain't even called and anointed of it? White women, how can you call, come bring to children, you bear, you bear seed, the, the little brown babies and different things, that whose culture is going to bring supreme or dominant in them? People get offended when you bring this. this the, the interracial hurts people. We have never got more feedback on this channel than when we bring up interracial marriage. Because then y'all come crawling out the woodwork like I done sprayed a can of raid on the camera. And that's why I ain't scared to touch it. <laughs> Nobody can help who they love. All right, well, how is it then you can't help who you hate? You hang us like it ain't no tomorrow. Nobody can't help who they hate. They hate the black man and woman all over the face of the earth. And you pass that hatred on to all nations. You have woven that hatred into the fabric of all society. It is in your educational curriculum. It is in your job policy public planning and every damn thing you do. ESG is now global racism, global homosexual promotion, violation of the Torah. And see, watch when they rebuild that damn Harvard Bridge and all that other stuff. Watch if they don't throw ESG out there. Now, here's the question. Elder Johnson, what the hell is ESG? I meant to look at your face this way. <laughs> ESG are global rules for all the corporations. They all, your job might be implementing them slowly and not telling you all. ESG stands for Economic Social Governance. ESG, Economic Social Governance. It's the new rules under the Great Reset. Let me explain how economic social governance works. For a company to get a good social rating and be advertised or be listed and be allowed to do business, you got to be willing to hire so many gays, so many transgenders, so many blacks, so many Hispanics. You got to be willing to do all of these different rules that they got you in. You got to be able to meet so many environmental standards. You got to be able to, at the appointed time, pull up off the cash system, make your employees get chipped, make them have the vaccine, make them do all of this stuff. This ESG policy Economic social governance. Look it up because it's all a part of that Agenda 21 stuff. And most of the companies and those businesses, remember when they was demanding that everybody get the shots and people were just falling out, falling all through because ain't nobody had no guts? See, sometimes you got to be the rebel and you got to not worry about how you look being a rebel. Sometimes you just got to be the rebel. Say, we will not do this. That's what the three Hebrew men said. They tell you, oh, listen, King, we're not concerned to answer you in this matter. The scriptures puts it politely. Oh, King, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. That's not what they said. They were saying, basically, look, man, come on. We ain't even concerned to answer you in this matter. The Elohim that we serve is able to deliver us out of your hand. And if not, still, him only will we serve. That takes power to know that the one you serve is the one and only, and you ain't going to yield. 
That's when you have the right to be proud and high-minded against them and arrogant. Arrogant just simply means unyielding in one's belief. Now, when you arrogant, you dead wrong, that's a different story. But I'm talking when you won't yield and in the truth, you have that right. So they come with that grand scheme to vaccinate the world and everybody got scared. I lost friends when the pandemic hit because people were calling me, want me to lie for them. Say that I will, I, they worship here and give them a, a, a letter and a stamp and this, that. I'm like, damn, with all due respect, I ain't, you, first of all, you called me, you didn't even say shalom or anything, uh, hey, punk, or nothing. Just, El John, yeah, I need a letter. I, man, hey, greet me, something. Hey, brother, how you doing? I will accept the simple, hello, is it me you're looking for? I will accept that. But just, I'm going to check and see how many viewers we had before I start speaking and after. I just made that point. Because, see, they're unsubscribed. They'll get mad at me. It's all right. I still love you. But I have to tell the truth. So people wanted exemption letters. And I was like, we don't do them. Charging people to get an exemption letter? Had to pay for him. I guess he figured my secretary got chopped this up. How much was it? Anybody know? They were just, just they were just charging. Here, here's, here's why we wouldn't do it. You you like that child that don't go see their grandmother till their money run low. Or till they food, then they at the door like a cat. Grandma, come on in, baby. How you doing? I'll never see you unless you're hungry. You want something to eat? Well, um, yeah, I'll take some. Grandma put all this stuff on the plate, feed you. What you ran there for two things. You wanted to eat, and now you need to hit the old woman up for $50. Well, that's how they treated us, like grandma. You know, I hadn't seen them. Not a, a shalom. Not a, a didn't even drive by and shoot at me with a rubber band. Nothing. I need an exemption. I said, well, you, how about you are the exemption? Uh, I, I need a letter because they're going, uh, 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 they, they messing with my pension. Uh, they can make cut this. I got to get another job. I got to. Why are you in panic? See, sometimes you got to get so mad that you go crying to y'all like you go crying to your neighbor. Cry out to them. I went to buy my house. They had all this paperwork, all these hoops you got to jump through. Do you have this? Do you have that? You had it. Now, a person can tell them you're getting sick of them because then you stop. I said, well, look, listen, lady. You know, I, I forgot what her name was, but I hit it with the listen lady. Now, the listen lady thing was cold for like getting a little sick of you. So I was like in the midst of uh, what you call it, closing or whatever. They still trying to find a way to block it, right? So you know what? Hey, can we take a break? Give me a take a break. Take a pause. I was pissed, man. Went out to the car, right? Now all that anger. <laughs> went out to the car and, and <laughs> y'all, please. I'm telling y'all the truth. It might be funny, but I'm telling you, I broke down. I cried to Father, y'all. And and you know how like when something happened, your child's hurting, but they're angry, and you're trying to soothe them. So that's how I went to Yahweh, and I told Yahweh like he didn't know. I. Uh, this, 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 this earth is yours, and and the phone is there. Make them give me my house, and he did. When I went back in there, she had all this paper, spun this stuff around, and you need the signature here, and you need this here. I was after why I wasn't even signing. I was. Cause I was like. Take me through all this all day. We could have been did this. I had ink in the pen. Then you get up front table and I shake your hand. I was like, okay, the brickie will come out. So we call it the brickie. It's the way a bricklayer shake your hand. He squeeze all your knuckles together, break your fingers. So when she put the hand out there, I was like, I can't. And she do that. Have a nice day. And that was cold for me. Like, ha! Got you. My point here, watch and see if we don't get brought to that point in this lifetime. Because a lot of us are playing with Yahweh. A lot of us are thinking things like, 
I can be a Hebrew and do what I want to do. I can smoke my weed. I can still party. I can still run with the women. I can do this. I can do that. Well, what then is your righteousness? Sitting and watching YouTube on the Shabbat? Do you know you have to live this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that this ain't a religion? This is a way of life. How you are supposed to, in honor, preferring one another. How you love one another so much so that sometimes you can look out for one another and do little things or be at each other's back and call and never, never seeking a pay or reward. Remember that time I drove you to the store when them two raindrops fell on your car and your window wouldn't go up and uh, well, now I need a favor. That's not how it works. We cover one another naturally anyway. And now, now look, y'all, look, look, look. that don't mean that. I'm be honest with you. We don't have it pouring in like that. Now, ain't, we ain't no Rockefeller here. They don't. I'm just being honest. I'm telling you straight out the gate. People, people call, hey, L. Don, listen, that's what I need. And I'll be like, I'm just, I'm just being real. And I'm like, hey, now. Somebody did something for me the other day. And I didn't have what they gave me. Ten minutes. Because I put it in Minister Johnson's hand and asked him to do something for me. Because a, a sister had texted about Torahs and uh, we sent one out immediately. So I gave him the money to mail it. So uh, don't matter. Top of the line. I don't care what it's called. Here, mail that. Do this, that, another. And he told me, he said, she should get it by Friday. You know, Mr. John, how he talked to y'all. I mean, you ever stand? He stand, he stand straight and tall. Yes. And she'll get it by Friday. He said that thing definite. I was like, oh, okay. So Friday, I get this text from the Hoti. Shalom, I got my Torah today. Told y'all for you all and for such kindness. Told y'all I love you all, the whole house of Israel. That's how I was sent down, because of us, which was the thing that we're supposed to do. We send the word out each and every week. Don't tell me them men don't labor faithfully. Don't tell me they don't, they labor faithfully. And as young men, they put, that's why if you all notice, you ain't seen me but twice during the whole feast. No. Three times. Three times. Now, this one, Shabbat. No, today is Shabbat. I was Wednesday night. Mr. Taylor finishes up and I'll close high Shabbat. I'll, I'll close out after him. But, and ain't no rush. You preach the word, do we do? I'm going to finish with Yahshua's high priestly intercessory prayer. Show you what he really blessed us with. But the point here. We labor. We don't charge people to view this or get different things. We have a whole slew of prophetic writings and things. I write every day. I got so many notes on stuff. Y'all just has not let me print it out yet. But when it's printed and we flood y'all, those of you on the mailing list, you'll see it when we send them out, little sheets and pamphlets and different things, because some stuff needs to be written down so that people can constantly refer back to it and go forward with it. Certain things you got to point out to y'all people in the world. And that, that don't mean go now and you got a piece of paper and you go at the. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You got to learn how to keep some things to yourself. Look how long the Russian church kept all them articles to themselves. The Vatican got all our stuff. Look how long they kept it. They ain't released nothing yet. He all sickly now. Come there. Did you hear about him? He gonna go speak to the people Sunday. All people could hear was. He's saying it in Latin or what have you. But if y'all heard the tape, that's all people heard was breathing. Because he just was so. And we're not mocking him in that sense. But he just was that weak that he couldn't do it. Let me explain to you all how this works. Why I say don't go rejoicing just yet. You got that beast up there. He got cancer. He got the false prophet over there. He's sick with whatever he got going on. But if it's prophesied that they got to gain power and strength from somewhere and rise up again, what happens if they both kick the bucket and both get replaced by something younger and then you got plenty of energy and you got the time to step in line and start fulfilling the things that the book says are going to happen anyway. What good will our premature celebrations have done 
if we ain't went through it yet. You understand? So my point, Russia opened the vaults. Okay, blessed be the name of Yahweh. Russia didn't tell any of us anything that we didn't already know. So he's telling the people that didn't know and people that don't want to hear it, like the little white woman. I doubt seriously if Jesus was an African American. Now, see, somebody like that, you call them out their name. You know how they do us when we say something. Wrong. Nigga, please. Now, you... you Trying to think of a polite word to say. <laughs> but if I said, now look, you, you, the term African American, you didn't have that term till you all coined that phrase anyway. But you brought the Hebrews here. This is what our brew brothers don't understand. We were chased out of our land. You take that map and you come out of that land of Israel. Now, understand this. I'm going to do this real quick. All this up here is the north. All this over here is north. Down here, this is the east. All this is east. Over here, this is the west. This is the south. That thing at the bottom, right? Now, we came out of our land, and we fled west. You get me? West. All of them down here. All in Africa, right? This hillbillyville up here, right? Ireland, uh, Germany, Poland, all that stuff. Spain, Portugal. They came down this coast. This is called the Gold Coast for two reasons. Okay, we were mining, getting gold there, what have you. But there was another type of gold they were looking for because they had figured out that there were a group of people in the earth so soft, so manageable, like Pillsbury biscuits in a can. When it pop out, they all soft. You know what I'm saying? Unless you bake them hard and then you got Negro biscuits. But you, anyway. They had a people, that was funny, I, I'm, I'm trying to compare. They, they, they found a people that were so soft, like biscuits. You could mold them and bend them. They would yield, feed you anything, give you anything they had, take you in, treat you like family, do whatever you tell them to do. But now you took them off their land and broke them so badly down in the Haiti, Bahamas, Dominican Republic, all them little islands where we broke away from them and fought back. Understand this about black people. In every family, tell the truth, every family got them wild people, don't you? You go to a family reunion, a funeral or something, you look over there, there's cousin Boo Boo, you like, yeah, boy, don't play, boy, been in the penitentiary 19 times, right? Then you got the other little cousin over there, little cousin Sarah or Sally or somebody, just as meek, humble. She done been all around the world, college scholarships, got so well educated, got children, children just as meek and sweet, just like her. Then you got the other ones, they confuse, you got the gossip, you got, you got a little bit of everything, right? Okay, our brothers in them islands and everything, they were a little rougher and tougher than we were. They fought back. So they took the islands, and that's how you got all of us down there today, Haiti and other places. Look, they, that's how you think even today, they still fight. They got the spirit of fight on them. So that's no knock on them. That's an honest to goodness truth, right around. So now, we were softer. This is what the Hebrews ain't going to want to admit to. You were softer, pushovers, more malleable, like a biscuit. You yielded. They said, stop saying Yahweh, you. <laughs> okay. You were brought here. This is why sometimes we still have differences because they in the islands and different places, they feel like you were the sellout. We were just softer. You got somebody from every generation coming up as children. There was a difference between me and my brothers. My oldest brother, he was rough and hardcore. Another brother, we don't really know which direction he went in. Then there's my brother Paul. Paul was very humble, very meek. It took a lot to set him up. You never seen Paul angry. One time, one or two times. Then there was me. I was the one to run. You get picked on, you do this, then other. So however y'all see my personality, whatever you know. But anyway, point. That's how the different characteristics of the tribes of Israel were. Yahuda was the soft, law-bearing, law-giving tribe. They, weren't, they didn't have to go out and fight. They were the royalty. Feet never touched the ground. They were taken care of. They were the priests. They were the kings and queens of the nation. That's where they chose them from, out of Yahuda. They should come out of Yahuda, he who is to rule all nations. So you had the kings coming. The nation of Israel was a nation of kings and priests, but each tribe also has specificities that were assigned to it. 
the Levites, the Levites, or what you would call the deacons, they were handling the priesthood and things of that nature. Your warrior class, Ben Yaman, and they were your sword wielders. And different things. So you have to know that about your culture because when you meet your brothers from the islands or different parts of the world, if you know the spirit of Israel, you'll know what tribe they're from when you feel them. That's why we condemn that dumb 12 tribes chart. You got to throw that crap away. Because they all around the world gathering up people that ain't got nothing to do with it. Your mother got, how many, how many come a big family? Anybody here come a big family? Five or more? Now, question to anybody. Did all your brothers and sisters kind of resemble you or you all kind of look alike and all resemble your father and mother? Or did you have one running around in the house that looked a little Chinese? And another look a little little look a little like a Filipino. Or another look like uh J Path. So you all tend to look alike, and you all are the same hue, same general family, even when the tones and the complexion change. You know, the light skinned one look like that black one right there. You tell they brothers and sisters, they just lighter shaded or whatever. They don't went around the world, got everybody, bring in everybody in, and then they rise up, think they better than you. You say, Well, damn it. Show me in your culture three or four hundred years ago. Because, see, we can go back three, four hundred years ago and find black preachers laboring in the scriptures and in the Torah as best they could. We get to y'all islands. Y'all was into any and everything. No semblance, no substance, no touches, no traces of adherence to Torah. How you of this or that tribe? See, you can't take a 21st century system of oppression and say the Hispanics are our oppressed brothers. Yeah, but they replacing you. How they they in on their pressure too. They had lands and different things. El Salvador and all this stuff. How you snatching them all the way from down there that they never had nothing to do with it? So all of y'all was people, they ran out of their land into West Africa. They fled all down in this part of the world. Now, if you look at us today, right, you can look at an Ethiopian. They have a different cranium than us. You can look at a, a Somali. They have a different head shape, different thing. You can look at us, okay, and see the cultural differences sometimes. We still all have the black skin, but no nationality people was hated like the black. The world don't hate on the Hispanic like they do the black man. I'm sorry, Hispanic people, y'all can't claim that one. You might be getting despised and all that other stuff, Jose, and I understand, but come on now, y'all can't claim that. You all, show me wherein you were called by the name of Yahweh. Where are you all with your names that reach back on it? How them old families, get them sons, them old Bible names. I, I know a man black as satin pants, black as his feet. His mother pulled his name out of the Bible, though. What's his name? Yes, I'll give you three, and all of them going to be wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Go on, keep going. Wrong before you say it, but go ahead. Samuel? Wrong. Anybody else? Yes. Because you wouldn't expect a black man to bear this name. It's a biblical name. It's in the Bible. <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> as close as I'm going to go. His name is Esau. Black is that speaker right there. Esau. His mother named him Esau. And when I talked with him one day on construction site, he said, don't even try it. Don't even, don't even try it. This one, this Esau was red, but this Esau I know is black. Black. A little short, dark skinned fella, bricklayer. He, he worked in construction. He saw bricklayer, black as can be. Here's my point they got them Hispanic brothers and all that, but they don't bear biblical names like that. Their culture, and when we start tracing them and looking at them, they go back and they wrapped and tied up in Catholicism and all the other stuff of the world as well. But you can't take them and say that genetically they are of that seed. Jacob didn't, Jacob's wife. When they were giving birth to the child, the wives, when they were giving birth to the sons and different things, he married black women, y'all. Come on now. Jacob didn't go nowhere and get no Puerto Rican woman. The, the, that, that culture actually hadn't even merged into itself. Or shall I say, I'm sorry, not merged, morphed. 
Okay. Sometimes you talk to these nations, you got to let them know, now look here, you are almost a hermaphrodite because you have morphed into yourselves from something else. Let's be clear on that. See, most of us don't understand that battle over there with the Palestinians and why they're suffering the way that they're suffering. Most of us do not understand that they have that Hittite, Jebusite, Perizzite blood in them as well. A lot of us don't understand. Then they intermingle with a lot of those other nations that were coming in, the Phoenicians, I'm, I'm sorry, not the Phoenicians, the uh, Syro-Greeks and different ones that were coming in and gave King David hell. See, people don't want to admit stuff about themselves. You know, why we got to admit stuff about, why the black man got nappy hair? And everybody know that. They had this video clip in school. The teacher says, what does the cow say? The students say, moo, moo. What does the dog say? Woof, woof. What does the pig say? And all those kids, little Jimmy was back there, happy as he could be, jumped up. What does the pig say, little Jimmy? Little Jimmy jumped up. The pig says, freeze your black MF, put your hands on the bound for our future, bow, 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 bow. That's what he perceived. It was funny, but... That's what he perceived, okay? Now, I would, it was a good one. Hey, boy, I, I, would, I would shake his hand, give him $5 if I ever met him. But we as a people today, we don't see how, if you can identify with what all the animals say, when you start looking into the culture of all these nations, show us where three or 400 years ago before these misguided Hebrews stood up and told you that that's what you are. Show me evidence in your culture where that's what you were. You understand? You can't find it. So they just bringing anybody in trying to make numbers and you're bringing confusion to the house of Yahweh with these uncircumcised of heart and physically nationalities that just don't jive. Your mother and father don't make a whole bunch of different babies. And my little, yeah, that's my little brother there, man. He's um, he, he's a uh, Phoenician. But you and your mother will be identified by these people as African American. How come all the rest of your brothers ain't like that? Oh, well, it's, it's a bunch of us because the, the baby he's Japanese. He got adopted. Oh no, uh, uh-uh. uh. He he didn't need baby. He's born right after me. It's that's not how it works. So these men that don't know nothing, they out here pushing that. Bringing more and more confusion to the house of Yahweh. These people are uncircumcised of heart. You just got them dressed up. Them brothers that wear the purple and gold, you see them, they got a big Esau on the front line. Big white boy, big burly white boy. He, he out there teaching. How in the hell are you? Is, man, please don't walk up on me nowhere. Because see, I, anyway. See, see, people after a while just... That's like, to me, that's an insult. That's like running up on me, telling me my wife ain't my wife because my wife is my daughter. And see, that ain't going to fly. You understand? Because see, that's the essence of what they're doing. You just bringing anybody in, saying any damn thing, trying to create an ally. And then now the Hispanics rising up, a lot of them saying they Israel and mad and arguing with who? The Hebrews. Well, you all did it because you brought in this foreign culture. Before you could get yourselves cleansed as the people of Yahweh, you opened the door to everybody else. That's, that's how we've done it. And you can tell you are the children of Yahweh because we were the only people that were just that soft and malleable, just go along with every little thing. Go along with every, what, the, what was the giant? Uh, 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 Goliath terrorized the whole nation. You mean tell me 20 Israelites couldn't get together and say, man, let's go to him and whoop them. You do it to each other today. The new generation, they, their thing now is beating on old men. Isn't that amazing? This young generation, their thing now is beating on old people. That, just that much hatred built up for the elders. But here's a giant, nine foot, six inches tall. Big dude. Had the whole nation scared. One little mischievous black man. Always doing something. Grew up in the house, teasing his brother's horse playing and everything. Just getting on everybody there so bad. His father sent him way out there with the cattle. Go out there and tend to the sheep. Put him way out back. They anointing, looking through all the men. The prophet there looking. He feeling something, but he, none of these ain't the one. You got any more? They, oh. Yeah, there is Dawid. He's out the back, but he, he's scrawny. Yeah. 
bring him here, let me see. Come find out he was the one. Then he had to stand up and fight for the day, go against the whole giant by himself, and then took the king's armor and everything, put all that off. No, I don't need that. No, uh-uh. I'll tell you what you do. I know I'm going to bust his head right here, right now. Watch this. <laughs> Boom! Someone went in there and sunk in the man's skull. That, that's what you look call busted head down to the white meat. See, again, black man, you know, ain't that what black folks say? I'll bust your head down to the white meat. Black man, anybody bust his head down to the white meat. See how you can't get away from cultural identifiers? So these brothers bringing everybody in, all confused. All they do is march. Now they all down in Africa, setting up temples. I thought y'all hated the Africans. You said they were dirty. You said they were stinky. Now you're down there in Africa. Okay, but they're waking up, people. However, the awakening of Israel ain't going to all be pretty. You hear what I'm saying? Some of this now going to be a little horrendous because we forget this one thing, and it is a horrifying point. We still have sin to pay for. You understand? We still have sin to pay for. You and I don't get to pick and choose how we pay back. Can you imagine you were a car thief as a child? You hanging out with a gang, you steal two, three cars a week, laugh and giggle, sell them for parts, make your little money and everything. In your lifetime, you done stole a hundred cars. You clean up, get your life together, get your act together, got a good job, and you done bought a nice car. Now you pray, Yahweh, I know in my lifetime I was a car thief. I thank you for correcting me, for bringing me this, that, and other. But please, if I have to pay back, whatever you do, don't let anybody steal my nice-looking Bentley. You don't get to pick and choose, right? As you have done, it shall be done unto you. Okay, so you go on. Months, years, whatever. Nobody never steal your car. None of that. Whatever the case may be. But you like your car. Okay. You pay for your sins in other ways. Now you have your children. What have you. you got a child born. Guess what? He, 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 there you go. He go out. He start being a car thief. Okay. That's one way you're paying for it. You don't tell Yahweh when it's over. Then you go out and uh, you cash in the check. You coming out the bank, whatever. And uh, you run across somebody else's child. He armed robber. Boop. He ain't took your wallet. Okay, now you're paying. You're hospitalized behind the head busting, whatever. Do it. Yo, my sin is greater than I can bear. Well, y'all be saying it ain't over just yet. You get out the hospital, you recuperate, you back to work, everything in motion. You drive him down the street one day. Here come a car thief, 90 miles an hour, and he slammed into your car. Yours total. You hospitalized again, messed up. Oh, y'all, when he messed up my car, he did this, that, and that. But the car thief, just like you, got away, unscathed, kept going. They too now must pay for their sin, but you don't tell y'all when payback is over. You understand? See, that's what we don't think about. We think once we come to y'all, it's nothing but Kawasaki let the good times roll. That's not how it works. We each have to pay. Sometimes in our older years, our later years, when we settle down after all the things have gone and we kind of like Yahweh has been merciful to me. He have not dealt with me after my iniquities. That's beautiful. But whether harsh or light, he make us pay. And next thing you know, we get stricken in our older years with bodily illnesses and different things that last throughout the duration of our lives, even until we go to the grave. So rejoicing, we rejoice in his highness, in his Kodesh days, in the righteousness, and in the beauty of holiness. But to rejoice just because we Hebrews and now that the blackness is coming out, that's all we got to do. No, we have to take this thing to the world in a way where people feel welcome learning of Yahweh. Which means you got to let them know, I ain't playing no games with you. We don't hate you, but we ain't going to play that game. You ain't coming in here dominating. You ain't subjugating. You ain't teaching. You ain't changing no rules. You ain't moving no seats around. You're not changing the shade of one piece of color on the wall. Nothing. Sit down and learn of Yahweh that you may receive the greater blessing of eternal life. You understand? That's what the world don't want us to catch on to. I admire one thing Vladimir Putin said. He said to them, 
And it was humbling the way he was talking. But he basically acknowledged that, he said, quote unquote, divinity is not bound or knows no color line. In other words, we white folks have thought that everything holy and just and righteous and divine was about us. But if we weren't there and the original stories were being told, then clearly, the if you're going to use the word divinity, clearly it relates to them first because they were before us. And that's the essence of what he was saying. That's why if you notice the internet going crazy this week, because they can't believe that a white man would actually say that. Okay, well, if nothing else, Putin's going to go down in history for many years to come as one of Russia's, perhaps probably one of their greatest leaders. Because, see, in commandeering that land and taking back stuff that they know belong to them, or whatever the case may be, it, it kind of hurts a little bit. But for them, it's uplifting. Can you imagine how Michael Jordan's mother felt when he kept on winning them NBA championships? And she like, that's my baby. You know how black women do. He can be 79 years old. If his mother 108, what's she going to say? That's my baby. So can you imagine how his family felt? Cousins and he grew up with, knew the cousins, ain't seen him in 30 years. But now all of a sudden they know him. Hey, everybody at the family union because Michael Jordan coming. They are proud of his accomplishments. Well, you think the Russians ain't proud of Putin's accomplishments? You think the, uh, what is the, uh, Trump's nationality? Is he German? Somebody in the back was saying something? German, okay. You think they ain't proud of him? The German Americans here? Where you getting all that money from? A $475 million bond. Couldn't meet it. Got it dismissed. And the next day, social media company, Truth Social, launched his 60% stake is worth $4.5 billion. Only problem he got, he can't pull it right away. It's like you and I with a bank account. You open the account, but you can't make a draw off of it. You know, you make a deposit, might not be available um, immediately. Okay, well, $4.5 billion, just that quick, creating something similar to Facebook. And just think, it ain't took off yet. How many people knew that? Now, just imagine how many people around the world didn't know it, that he got his own social media account. So imagine when they do learn and draw down off of Zuckerberg or draw down off of Twitter. What's the other one? Uh, uh, X. You all banned him. He went and did his own thing, and it took off. So we say to the white folks, you all banned us. Yahweh had his own thing, and he gave it to us. So we go and do our own thing, and it's going to take off. Hallelujah. And it's going to rain throughout the face of this whole earth. Hallelujah. You just got to tell the men, you do have hope. Our brothers don't have hope. Every little issue ain't always a male-female thing where everybody got to be arguing over the issues of why are you just, why the men, why the women, well. Yeah, it's a spirit. It gives you a headache sometimes when you can't even address one another properly. There are just things men can do that women can't do. Listen, sisters, stop. Stop the competition. Y'all can't ride in the snow. Yahweh said, let's clear that up with scripture. He was going to come through Jerusalem and tear them down because we were out of order. And he said, quote unquote, and I would destroy all that piss upside the wall. Come on now. Stop trying to make everything be all inclusive. Yeah. <laughs> See, in the maternity war, it, yeah, I don't give a damn what they do. You ain't got no men up in no bed, no maternity war. Go down there, go down there as a male doctor if you want to, and look at all the women in their bed giving birth and baby. How come ain't no men in here? The hell is going on? Every pregnant woman in the building ought to jump up and whoop you. You think that. So sometimes you have to get each group together. You're not getting them together to go to war against each other. Sometimes you got to get them together to teach them how to love a wife, how to stand and be a man. You got to get them, sometimes you got to get them to teach them, give them a work ethic. I got on the brother the other day. It was funny. Youngest brother. He the youngest one on the, in, on the job. He's about 30, but he looked like he's about 22. So I walked up. I got my report and stuff done in the morning. They waiting on the concrete truck to pull up and everything there. They got all the tools in place. They doing last minute prep, making sure the sidewalk is in place, the measurements and everything. I walk up. He's sitting down. All the older men working. 
We got two brothers, the Lemon Brothers. They, uh, Anthony and Sylvester, they work hard, man. Got the other brother, David, he working. Uh, Eli, he working. Then one young brother sitting down. So I said, hey, you the youngest thing I have. What you doing sitting down? Because they every time I take a tool, they take the tool from me. I said, well, um, you know, joking. I said, well, you got to fight them for it. I said, when I was coming up, them old men, they trained us. You got to fight that old man for the tool. Take it from him. That way, he don't have to work as hard. You young. You supposed to outwork him because he's teaching you. He said, yeah, I'll do that. So, well, I'll tell you what you do. Which one of y'all hit the hardest? And the older brother said, that'd probably be me. I've always been in a lot of fights in my day. Why you ask me that? I said, okay, good. Hit him. Take the shovel from him. Since he don't hit as hard as his brother do, take the shovel and go on to work. So we were laughing about it. And they realized, no, nah, that, that was funny. That was funny. But he just, no, nah, we just, we, he young. Uh, he'll learn. A few minutes later, when the concrete truck come up, and we all out there, shovels, picks, and everything helping, they had it all worked out anyway. They did not need me. As the supervisor, they said, we don't need you doing it. Stop. Get out. The, go sit in the truck. Go do a report. We got it. And it was funny the way they rebuked me, but it was respectful. It was like, it ain't your job to do this part. We got this. Point. Years of watching my father and them older men work and do stuff like that and the things they taught us and showed us how to do, it's the same thing in the assembly of Yahweh. Those old men have to teach it and prepare it and get everybody. And as they hit those years and that time of decline, everybody would know that when Yahweh Baruch them in such a way where they know they can safely step back. And it's not an ego trip. It's not a, I'm in charge here. Whoever y'all would put in charge, everybody knows that they're in charge. But if you notice the way Yahshua came, he ain't come boosting and busting through. I'm in charge. I looked at a Hebrew Israelite uh, uh, social media page. They put up there about why the women can't preach. If a woman can't preach, why was the first message sent back taken by a woman? See how we don't understand the first message was simply you go get them together. Go tell them where I'll be. He didn't give her no message to preach nothing. But see, we lie so much, and the devil divides us on every level. Gender. Got you arguing over the genders, this, that, and that. Well, if y'all feel like that so much, swap out. Right or wrong? Swap out. Don't go to the doctor. Swap out in the kitchen. Go in the bedroom. Wherever you are. Hey, baby, look, I'm going to be you today, and, and you go out and be me. Uh, ain't happening. So why argue over roles that Yahweh assigned? Trying to be overly righteous. We got to stop that because when this thing starts falling and the system starts crumbling, we got to know the order of steps. As it starts crumbling and they get angrier and angrier, whatever resources that they are, who you think they're going to try to keep the resources for? They ain't going to give the resources to you till absolute embarrassment and displacement has come upon them. The same way we came up out of Egypt. This is how you coming up out of all of the nation. They're going to be so afraid, so broke down, so demoralized, so hurt. Hey, Mr. So-and-so, can I have that gold watch you had right there? I'm going, we're going home and I'm going to, sure, take it. Yeah, watch and see if you don't come out the same way we came out of Egypt. But right now, they get me to do a resource short. They get me to do everything. That's why I humbly suggest to Israel, pay attention to what's going on in the world. This thing in Baltimore ain't just going to impact us here in Baltimore. It's going to impact everybody. So on the East Coast, I humbly suggest here and now, after the feast is over with, carefully analyze your needs versus your wants and stockpile your stuff again. If it all don't slow down and kaboom by next Passover, you'll know right around that December time frame, January, start slacking up on what you have. Eat up all your leavened items or what have you, the stuff that ain't leavened, you can still hold on to that. But if it come the following year, as it's over, you stock back up again. But things are getting ready to get tighter. And you're going to need men in Yahweh to have the vision of Yahweh to see. You're going to need women in Yahweh to have the vision and understanding to see how to guide the household so that all this stuff walks in place like Yahweh commands that it should. And in his last 24 hours on this earth, if you watch everything Yahshua was going through, he was teaching them how to prepare, how to be ready for certain things, how all the stuff that they needed. That's why he went away and prayed three times. One prayer, even for each day that he would be in their grave. 
Can you imagine that? All right, I'm gonna put these out for my lunch tomorrow. I'll put, I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna have these on Tuesday. I'm gonna have this on Wednesday. One prayer for all of us that Yahweh will move the cup. If not, protect me because I gotta get back up. Not that he doubted, but even the pressure of dying for us. The flesh cried out just like you and I. My El, my El, why have you forsaken me? He himself didn't know it would be that bad. But yet it was still bad. But yet he still said, I delight to do your will. Then he gave up the spirit around 3 p.m. So they looking for the eclipse and all this stuff. Scared of some darkness now. Nah, y'all been walking in darkness since you've been on the earth. Don't worry about it now. If the book ain't true, don't worry about an eclipse. And yet, talk about the eclipse for selling glasses and all this other stuff. Want to make money. Telling people if you come, stock up on your food and your goods. What y'all anticipate? Ain't there something charging people just to look up at the sky? And anybody paid is a straight up and down idiot. You can come and look at it from my house. That's good. We can still look up. We can, we can wait for it just in case. They might be wrong. Come on, we can do it for $24.99. Somebody, I'm just messing with y'all. I'm just saying. But here in conclusion, Yisrael, we have a savior that died for us. And this thing reaches around the world. It's either real or it ain't. But it's time for the Hebrew Israelite community now to stop playing. Just quietly get yourselves together. Follow the Torah of Yahweh like it commands that we do. Ain't no time to keep on doubting now as to whether or not it's true. Obey. Keep the book. Because as it starts falling on them, it's going to get so hot and heavy for them. They're going to be crying to the mountains and to the rocks. Please fall on us and destroy us. Hide me from the face of him that sits upon the throne. How y'all know you're on the throne if you don't believe he is who he is? So much pressure going to hit that they're going to know this is the one that sits on the throne. Well, I don't want to be hanging out with him. I kid you not. I, I, not me. I don't want to be hanging out with him. Since you think he don't know the right way to govern the earth that he made, then you go on and you do it the way you all do it. You making the earth in your own image. And we're going to see how long it stands. Yes, Rael. The last hours of Yahshua's day pertains to your salvation that takes your last hours and turns it into everlasting life if you only just believe and obey. That makes sense? Yeah. Hallelujah. Israel, at this time, let us stand. Abba Yahweh, we thank you for the gift of life, our health and strength. We thank you for the days of this Feast of Unleavened Bread. We ask you in the mighty name of Yahshua that you please continue to be with us. Watch over us and stand by us. Protect us, especially even in the last days. All the real and true Israel, wherever they may be, Father, we ask that you touch their hearts and minds. Help us to walk up before you in a manner that's clean, honorable, and acceptable in your sight. As well as unto the Gentile multitude, for many of all kindred, tongues, and nations shall come unto you. We ask as well in Yahshua's name that as they come before you and are sincere, that they be baruched as you said unto them in the word, that you would make them into your house and give them a name better than of sons. We ask, Father Yahweh, that as you said you wouldn't forget them, that in Yahshua's name, please don't forget us as well. This blessing we ask now, henceforth, and forever in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Happy Shabbat and Feast of Unleavened Bread unto you all. Yes, why, yeah. Hallelujah.